take step one on what they think could be a march to a championship. Hey, back in the Coliseum, boys. Hey, we've been waiting all year for this. Let's come out smoking. Hey, let's get up. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Tonight, the wait is over. Inside the historic Los Angeles Coliseum, Coach Pete Carroll begins his quest for a third national championship as the fired-up USC Trojans play their home opener against Idaho. Straight ahead, touchdown. All eyes will be on Heisman candidate John David Booty as he leads the number one team in the nation. Spirit, pride, intensity, national championship. The drive begins tonight. The home opener of USC football next on FSN. Welcome to the L.A. Coliseum. We expect a crowd of 92,000 tonight. 92,000 believers. People who really think that once again, their team is the best team in the land. This is Kyocera College Football Saturday. Tonight, the USC Trojans preseason's number one against the Idaho Vandals. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and it's great to tee it up once again with my pal and my partner, Petros Papadakis. And Petros, yes, it's number one against number 113, and I know what all the experts think, that it's a seven-point difference, seven-touchdown difference between these two teams. But I'll tell you what, I'll give you two words, and I know you know what they are. Appalachian State. Happy State. If Happy State can do it, why not the Vandals? They're a Division I team after all. They're into whack, but still, on paper, this is one of the biggest mismatches we have ever seen. And on paper, USC right now, the best in the country by far. Of course, for any football team in college, it all begins and ends maybe with the quarterback, and USC has a very good one. Yeah, they have a good one, and they have good ones behind him, but John David Booty right now is a Heisman favorite because he is on the finest team in the country, and this is a guy that has lived up to expectations left high school a whole year early to come to Southern California. He's accurate. He's got great feet. He's become a great leader, and he's got a quick release. you got to love him as a player, and he does great things. If they can go wire to wire, he'll win that Heisman. So it's a great offense. There's no question about it. But you know what? As good as that offense is, the Ds may be even better. And for them, the catalysts are really that linebacking core. Yeah, the linebackers that USC has, Barry, are second to none, not only in this conference, but in the country. Ray Mawaluga is so reckless, so dangerous over pursues sometimes but puts giant hits on people keith rivers his back looks like a kite he makes plays he's a ball hawk and he's the fastest of the three and brian cushing the most natural of the three linebackers rose bowl mvp the guy is a performer all three of these guys make nightmares for defenses all right let's talk about the idaho vandals yes they may be overmatched today but i'll tell you one thing and we we know this from knowing their new coach rob Aki for a long time from his days at washington state if passion wins football games, they're going to win. Oh, they'll win this football game if it was about being positive and passionate because that is what he has brought to this Idaho team. Four head coaches in five years. These guys feel like foster children moving from family to family, but he's come in, made some good changes, and really handled things with a great attitude, and that's how his team, no matter what happens, is going to handle this game. And he's got a quarterback whose last game was in North Platte, Nebraska. Yeah, Nathan Enderley, quarterback for the Vandals, is coming in to play his first college football game in this cauldron of anger known as the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. It is not going to be easy for him, but he's a pretty good quarterback. He's got a good arm. He can do some good things. He's not going to run all up and down the field, but I hope they put him in some good situations. And Rob Aki says, you know what? We're not on. We're going to go out there. We're going to play some football. Let the cards fall where they may. It's an outstanding USC football team. One other note, it is hot. It's about 90 degrees as we prepare to kick it off, and it's humid. The Vandals and the Trojans. After the break, we'll send you to our College Football Saturday studio in Los Angeles. Welcome inside our Kyocera College Football Saturday studios here in Los Angeles. Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr. We are now moments away yes. from number one's first game of the year. Rock stars. But that arch rival up the beach a little bit, Cal Berkeley. Wow, what a game they are playing right now against number 15, Tennessee. Deshaun Jackson, I'm trying to remember who he reminds me of. Reggie Bush, Rocket Ismail, Tim Brown, electrifying players Charles in college. Woodson. Charles Woodson. 
He's one of them. He's a Heisman Trophy candidate and a legit one. That was his sixth career punt return for a touchdown. That's an NCAA record. Score tied at 21. Nate Long short of Robert Jordan. And Cal leads 37-21. little revenge from last year, at least they hope. Number seven, Wisconsin entertained Washington State. And Washington State entertained the idea of upsetting Wisconsin for a while. But then the new quarterback, Tyler Donovan, took over. The big tight end in the middle of the field. Sometimes you just got to get physical and bowl your way in there. Unfortunately, Washington State, if you're a Pac-10 fan, of course, is now 0-6 all-time in season openers against top-10 teams. Donovan, 284 yards, three touchdowns. Wisconsin doubles up Washington State. Number 17, UCLA at Stanford. Pac-10 action early. Big day for Ben Olsen. Isn't that over the back? Oh, that's UCLA basketball. What a great catch. I love this play here. Receiver screen. Now watch all the blocking. Now watch this last block coming up. This is what you do. You don't give up on the play. You help your buddy out. I got you. Get out of bounds. Olsen had a career-high five touchdown passes. UCLA gained 625 total yards. And in baseball, just called up today, Clay Buckle threw a no-hitter for the Red Sox in just his second career start against the Baltimore Orioles. Good story indeed. Good story under the lights about to be told. Number one, USC. We're all talking about John David Booty in mm -hmm. the offense. What happens after Reggie Bush? What happens after all the great guys have left for a few years? But this defense has the ability to be as good as the one that took him to back-to-back -back championships. Yeah, maybe even better. Three of the starting defensive line are all on the watch of the Outland watch list. I talked to Pete Carroll earlier this week. He told me the most important player on the football team is Cedric Ellis for what he does, takes up two, just stuffs up everything. So no problem with the Vandals tonight trying to steal one? Uh, no. All right, <laughs> number one USC under the lights, set to start what they hope will be another national championship season. The kickoff is coming up next. And here come the USC Trojans out out of the field. This is a hungry unit and a team that even though they're the preseason number one in the country, they feel they have something to prove. What a beautiful night here at the LA Coliseum. As you said, though, it is very warm and indeed very humid as well. This game is brought to you in stunning high definition by Hitachi. Well, you may wonder why uh, a game that has uh, as much as a 45 point differential, according to the experts, was made in the first place. I have an idea we're going to get the answer right now as we meet the third member of our broadcast team. Here for the first time is Jim Watson. Waddy. Very good to be back with you guys. Another season of college football on FSN. You're right. When this game was announced, fans on both sides had the same one word question. Why? Why would USC schedule Idaho and why would Idaho subject themselves to this? You can trace it back on both sides to one guy, Nick Holt. Nick Holt is the current defensive coordinator for USC. He's the former head coach at the University of Idaho and he thought it would be a good idea for these teams to meet on the football field. He's one of the only ones. In fact, a lot of people have been having fun with this. One newspaper is calling this the blue chippers against the cow chippers. On paper, you guys said it before, it is a mismatch. Keep this in mind that USC plays in a county of six million people and Moscow, Idaho, the home of the University of Idaho, 21,219, about the size of three of those sections here at the sold out Coliseum. They do have one thing on their side. You talked about this already as well. Appalachian State. I asked Rob Bakey, will you talk about it? He said, I've been talking about it all day. Barry, let's hope the Vandals brought a few slingshots with them. Well, you know, it, the thing is, it doesn't seem like it's so impossible anymore just because of what Appalachian State did. Not after watching Appy State. The Mountaineers do what they did in the big house. Now, I don't know how big you think the big house is, but the Coliseum's just as big and just as daunting. And if they can do it, the Vandals could do it. USC won the toss. They have deferred, and that, that's interesting. We'll talk about that as we go along here because I think more teams now are going to start to take the ball because of the new rule. The kickoff has now moved back to the 30-yard line, so we're going to see a lot more runbacks. It's certainly made for much more exciting offense in the football games than I've watched in the last couple days, and there'll be a lot more injuries because of it, too, because there is no more violent play in college football than the kickoff. A lot more strategy in how you kick off as well. And Beeler drives this one. About three yards deep, Frank fumbles it, and now he will not come out. Take a look at the starting lineups. Presented by Keo Serra, first of all on the offense, and we talked about Nathan Enderley, a redshirt freshman, last played in North Platte, Nebraska. Deontay Jackson will be the running back, and he is a good one. He's got a lot of scoot according to his coaches. 
Mike Ayupati is the big guy they call him. Big Mike. What a shocker. Yeah, 360 pounds. I would say that's Big Mike. Stanley Franks in the ballgame on offense. He is a defensive back. He lines up split to the far side of the field. And now we've got a flag before we even get started. So immediately, the Vandals will move backwards, not an auspicious start. No time off the clock, and they're going back five yards, and that's part of the nerves, number one, of just playing your first football game. But the nerves of playing your first football game in this place against this team, a little bit compounded. So they'll try it all over again. Now first and 15. Andrew Lee with his first collegiate snap. Franks. Comes in motion, they give it ahead to Jackson, and Jackson will get about three. Take a look at the defense presented by Kiyosera. We talked about the USC defense, and you can pick your unit down line, linebacker, secondary. They are all amongst the elite in the nation. Lawrence Jackson, Cedric Ellis, Fili Moala, and Kyle Moore. Is there a better group? I'm not sure there is. And we already talked about the linebackers. Take your choice. Probably three potential number one draft picks. Kerry Harris will get a start at cornerback ahead of Josh Pinkard, who banged the knee in practice, and we are not likely to see him tonight. Second down and 12. And a draw play this time, and the give is to Jackson, and Jackson will get it across the 20-yard line, about the 21. And it'll bring about a third down and long. I like what Steve Axman is doing right now with the Vandals offense, taking it easy, being cool with the quarterback, just running the football, trying to get some of those nerves out. Good look at Rob Anke right there. His team looking at a third and long. Andrew Lee gives again to Jackson. Jackson will have a first down and more. Pops it inside, gets across the 40 to about the 43-yard line, and Travis Mays makes what might be a saving tackle, 21 yards. Nice run, just a very simple zone kind of dive. Deontay Jackson out of Warren, Arkansas, redshirt freshman playing his first game ever. Malaluga once again over pursuing as he is apt to do. Chris Anderson with a very nice block. You see him coming around number 77, hitting Lawrence Jackson, and right up the gut for Deontay Jackson. Got to feel good for a redshirt freshman there. And that first down has got to feel good to the Idaho Vandals. A third and long. Short drop, first pass going by Emily, almost picked. Ellison was defending on the intended receiver, Max Komar, who Steve Axman said is his best wide receiver, a former walk-on. It's not going to be easy to fit short passes in versus this USC defense because you're talking about guys that are so athletic and so fast that it's very difficult to fit in little spots. They do have a little bit of a problem with taking the ball away. They did not do that well last year. Just about one of the only things they didn't do well. Still just about plus 16 in the Pete Carroll era. Not bad. Checkoff here for Enderley, the freshman who looks very poised. And he gave us to Jackson, and there's nothing doing. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Fili Moala, the first there. Those are positive plays, believe it or not, for Rob Aikie's Vandals in this game. They've done great on this drive. They started out with the penalty. That was not a good sign. But since then, like you said, Barry, they've shown poise. They've run the ball into that line of scrimmage. And they've done some good things and made some positive plays. And even though that one didn't go anywhere, at least it didn't go backwards. And I don't think people should be happy about that. Now a third and long. They go with a slot left this time with Comar in the slot. Lee Smith comes to the near side. Now in motion goes Coleman. Here comes a blitz. Enderly flagged down, and Enderly is hit right as he unloads. It was Cedric Ellis coming hard on Enderly. The cave of the blitz, Maoluga was coming from the middle backer spot. Six players on the line of scrimmage. That's our referee today, Jack Foyer. And that's one of those things. Look at Cedric Ellis, number 49, 
All-American nose tackle just running right over the back. Deontay Jackson trying to block him. That is not a good matchup if you're Idaho. Cedric Ellis is going to win that one every time. And you're seeing the four coaches in five years right now. A little bit of that with Idaho. Guys having trouble lining up on this first drive. And you see the numbers on T.J. Connolly. And Connolly drives this one pretty good. Desmond Reed going to back up and let it go. And it will take one hop and fall into the end zone. So a 56-yard punt, he probably would have preferred it if it were about 54. But the Trojans will start at the 20-yard line. As we take a look at the Kyocera starting lineup for USC, we talked about John David Booty, very much, of course, of a Heisman Trophy candidate this year. Feels like he's in better shape and has learned a lot from last year, and he was pretty darn good last year. Saw the skill position people, the offensive line probably without peer. I realize I'm being redundant when I say without peer, but that's a fact about this football team. Many people have said maybe amongst the elite college football teams ever. Tough to say that, though. You have to wait for a team to get their identity. About three or four games in it. Pete Carroll was having none of it when we asked him about it. Give this time is to Gable, and Gable pops it, and he may be gone. Midfield, and dragged down from behind at the 47-yard line. Shiloh Keo with what might have been a saving tackle and a gain of 33 on the first snap. C.J. Gable's a guy who's been bothered by a groin injury for much of camp, but they just got such a wonderful push with that offensive line. Gable just has a giant bubble to run behind. You see that? No one's even touched him all the way down the field. That's the first hit somebody gets on him, and that's about 30 yards downfield. C.J. Gable running behind a very talented offensive line and was... not a very deep or experienced defensive line for Idaho. And I give this time is to Stephon Johnson. He's got a little wiggle, and he gets it to about the 41-yard line. That'll be a gain of about six yards. David Bobora, probably the best defender on the Idaho team, makes the stop. Take a look at the defense of the Idaho Vandals. And the down line, well, there are some issues on the down line. They, uh, it is not up to what Rob Akey would like, nor what he expects. David Bobora, good linebacking core here, led by Bobora. And Stanley Franks led the nation in pass interceptions last year. He's a guy who will take some chances. Second down and four. Give this time once more to Gable, and Gable is going to be stopped short of the first down by about a yard by Joe Artis Ratty. Ratty, an L.A. product. He's got, he said, 20 to 30 of his family members and friends in the stands tonight. And he said he better not see any of them with the fight on fingers up or a USC jersey on or bouncing around to the USC Trojan marching band. He didn't want any of that stuff. He wants them all vandals all the time, and I don't blame him, man. He's out there doing his thing. Absolutely. David Osborne comes to the near side. On third and one. They give this time to the fullback. Lavili, Lavili bounces it outside. Hurdles over a man. Gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Right over Brayon Williams. Stanley Havili is a guy that will be missed when he leaves USC, and he was missed last year when he did not play. Injuries were rampant in the fullback position for USC last year, and it really did hurt them. This is an athletic guy who can run the ball, but really he enjoys blocking more. The running is just extra for him, and that was a beautiful athletic play. You don't expect that from a redshirt freshman, 6'1", 225. You don't see that from a lot of fullbacks, man. Oh, you don't. Pete Carroll said they are going to utilize the fullback a lot more this year. Booty to throw for the first time. That's the roll away from pressure. Now he releases underneath. And the catch is made by Stephon Johnson. And he's going to be close to the first down. It'll be about two yards short. Good job that time to get Booty out of the pocket. And John David Booty showing an extreme amount of patience on this play. You see Ben Alexander runs very well, flashes in front of his face. Stephon Johnson, not a lot of experience, just a sophomore, didn't play a lot last year, but showing the quarterback his numbers and giving him a good target. Brandon Ogletree missing the tackle there. Stephon Johnson's pretty shifty now. Very much so. A really improved player. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along as well. Second on a three, play fake. Booty rolling to his right as all day. Now he throws a comebacker and catches made falling out of bounds by Hazleton. And they're going to say he was out of bounds, and they're not going to allow that catch. We were talking about the USC defenders not giving the Idaho receivers a lot of room. Well, Stanley Frank's not going to give anybody a lot of room out there. He led the nation in interceptions last year for a reason, and he's right up on Vidal Hazleton. 
playing in one of his first meaningful games as a Trojan, also a sophomore. But a lot of these guys just burn their red shirts. Pete Carroll doesn't redshirt a lot of guys. No, he doesn't. Gives everybody a chance to play, and he's got some talented freshmen once again. One of them starting at center tonight. There's a pitch this time to Gable. Gable left side, bounces it outside. Gets the 15 inside the 15. The 15 the out of USC first down. We're going to see C.J. Gable tonight getting most of the carries and tailback for the Trojans because he is the most reliable. Stephon Johnson, really a reclamation project from this year and last spring, a giant recruit out of Dorsey High School in Los Angeles, California, and a guy that didn't display a great attitude, sort of had a sense of entitlement last year. This year, that's changed a lot. We will also see Alan Bradford, a big kid who played a little bit of fullback last year, a sophomore out of Colton, California. We haven't seen him yet. Gable stays in the game. First down at the 14-yard line of the Vandals. First offensive possession for the Trojans. This time, they bring Havili in motion. Straight back booty, looks at Havili, throws to him at the 10-yard line. Makes the first man miss, makes the second man miss, and he's going to be very close to a first down. It was Brayon Williams who came up and had the play on Stanley Havili. Trying to exploit a mismatch, a corner versus a fullback, and you'd think the corner has the advantage there, but Stanley Havili showing some very good feet, eluding two vandals before Chris Smith is able to get to him. Fullback looking pretty good. Just a redshirt freshman, as you said. Probably would have started last year, according to the coaching staff, but it, you mentioned he got hurt. Second down and short, less than a yard. Play fake, Booty looking to the end zone. Again, he has all day to throw. He throws too tall, intended for David Osbury. And you got to throw it high to be too tall for Osbury at 6'4. Rayon Williams defending, doing a nice job. Well, a lot of people talk about the talent pool that USC has, and there's no question they have a great talent pool, but especially at the wide receiver position and a little bit at the tailback position, they don't have proven playmakers. They don't have somebody that woke up in the hotel this morning expecting to catch nine balls or run the ball 20 times. They have to develop those guys. Stephon Johnson, now the lone setback on third down. Less than a yard for the first down. This is Johnson. Right side, touchdown. No big surprise, Barry. USC didn't do it with a lot of smoke and mirrors. They basically ran the football over and over again and getting a great push with the offensive line and pinning the linebackers in. Stephon Johnson able to get outside and do his thing. So now the try for point, and they have not put a kicker onto the field. And this, there is a reason for this, Pete. It is the memorial for Mario Danello, who passed away in the winter time. Now what they're going to do is they are going to take a delay of game penalty as a tribute to Mario Danello. Danello, of course, tragically died in the off season. And just a kid that everybody was in love with in the community of San Pedro, which is where I live, San Pedro, California, and also here at USC. And really, a special thing that Pete Carroll just did right there. This community really rallied around San Pedro, California. It was a tight-knit community in the USC team and just a very tough time. And Beeler will try the extra point. I'm sure he will do so with a heavy heart. And he drives it through. So a very apt tribute to a guy who the kicker here, Beeler, really gives a lot of credit to for making him what he is. So a touchdown, an extra point. Once more, let's go to the field for more on the story with Jim Watson. Roddy? Yeah, very emotional openings to the college football season on both coasts earlier today, of course, at Virginia Tech. And here at the Coliseum is USC. Mark the passing of the kicker, Mario Danello. And before the game today, the entire Trojan team lined up at the end of the field as Danello's family and his parents, Joe and Emily, were led to midfield and honored. 93,000 people came to their feet and then went silent as a video tribute was played to honor Mario Danello's impact here on the USC program. Mike Garrett, Pete Carroll holding up his jersey, which is now retired. There are many examples of him. There are banners. His number hangs in the tunnel. His name and number is on the goal post here at the Coliseum that that extra point just went through. And then the sticker on the back of the helmets. It is all proof that although Mario Danello is gone, he remains in the hearts and minds of his teammates forever.
All right, Waddy, thank you very much. So just living the dream. That was what Mario Dinello always said, and it's become a buzz phrase now on this USC team. Wheeler's kick to about the six-yard line. Franks on the receiving end, and he is surrounded and down as he crossed the 20 at about the 23-yard line. Malcolm Smith on special teams. Another young USC player about whom uh, Pete Carroll speaks in glowing terms. They got a lot of them, Barry. Pretty much three deep on the USC football team. You're looking at guys from all over the country. When I used to play at USC, it was mostly guys from Southern California. Now, guys from Tennessee, guys from Michigan, guys from Florida, guys from the South, guys from the East Coast, New Jersey, guys from everywhere come out here to Los Angeles, California, because this is where you can become a star playing college football, and that's a perception, and they got a lot of All-Americans to prove it. Well, and it's getting to be like Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. They always say he doesn't recruit, he selects, and there's a little of that going on here. First down for the Vandals at the 23, and Emberly trips and falls. Let's send it right now to our College Football Saturday studio for Kyocera Game Break with Mike Goldberg. Barry, it is an upset that will be one for the ages. Division one, two A Appalachian State at the big house against number five, Michigan. Leading by two, Michigan trying to win it with a field goal, and the field goal is blocked. It was the first Division one, two A school ever scheduled by Michigan, and they walked away the victor, 34-32. All right, thanks a lot, Cody. And more, even more impressively, they had lost the lead yeah. and came back and won the football game in the big house. It boggles the mind to think about what those guys from Appy State were doing last night or thinking about this morning because they played a great game. That's what they're doing tonight, <laughs> and that's a given. <laughs> Loss on the play that time as Jackson could not get started. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be very difficult for the Vandals to move the football. They don't have a lot of wide receivers. Their best wide receiver is a walk-on who earned a scholarship, Eric Greenwood. They don't have their other running back, Brian Flowers. He's been suspended for this football game. Deontay Jackson's going to see most of the carries. And Enderley's playing in his first game. These guys are really going to have to show poise and hang in there not, to move the ball. Not to mention the fact that when Rob Akey got the job, he dismissed 17 players from this team, some of whom were his more experienced players, but he just said he, said he had to set the tone. And just like that, a first down across the 35-yard line, Enderley is handling it extremely well. Lee Smith that time with the first down, brought down by Sharice Wright. And Aki described Lee Smith as a steady type of guy, a guy that will make these kinds of catches on the comeback. Very nice movement. Enderly staring right in the face of his center. Adam Corby delivers the ball right into the chest of Lee Smith. And he dives for that first down. Second first down for the Vandals. Not bad. Nice ball thrown by Enderly, too, and a very good fake. This time in motion comes Eddie Williams. We'll see him in a lot of spots tonight. Quick toss to Comar. Comar makes the catch and is dropped short of the 40-yard line. A gain of close to five yards. Rivers and Harris on the tackle for the Trojans. Komar, another former walk-on and a guy who combs his hair forward, the old school Caesar cut like Marky Mark used to do back when he was Marky Mark. And they're doing a good job right now, the Vandals spreading the ball around, going back and forth, using both sides of the field and expect them to run Deontay Jackson up the middle in a second. Well, we mentioned that they are not odd coming into this game, and that's the way they're playing. They may be out man, but they're not odd. Play fake this time, Enderley finds some time, throws, caught this time downfield by Lumbala, the tight end, at the 43-yard line of the Trojans. And now the Vandals are starting to get it going. That's their second first down in this drive. Raleigh Lumbala, a giant tight end, 6'2", 240 senior out of Calgary, Alberta. He's a Canadian, America's at Barry. Enderley showing a lot of poise, relaxed, has a lot of time and throws it between three very good Trojan defenders. Taylor Mays and Kevin Allison. Ooh, don't want to mess with those guys. Those are good safeties. They come from Calgary, Alberta, but went to Alberta from Libreville, Gabon. And there's not a lot of good football teams there. I know that. I don't want to look like the Team USA, South Carolina girl, but where, where is it? On the west coast of Africa. <laughs> complete pass this time. And intended for Eddie Williams. And right now, Enderley's 
having his fill of time. They're doing a good job moving the pocket back and forth, and as long as nobody's in his face, all these All-American candidates like Lawrence Jackson, who got in there a little bit on the last play, and Cedric Ellis, as long as those guys aren't knocking him down on his neck, he's going to feel more and more comfortable as this game goes along. You don't want to give him too much confidence. He looks very poised, actually, Pete. Second down and 10. Ball at the 43-yard line of the Trojans. Amberley this time gives to Jackson. Jackson gets forward for about four. Philly Moala on the tackle. He'll be marked right at about the 40-yard line, giving three yards. Cushing is going to come off, hopping for USC. Now, this is a deep football team, to be sure, but that's a guy you really can't afford to lose. That is not a good sign, because this guy is pretty much Mr. Everything for the USC defense. Their biggest recruit, their biggest leader, and their best performer, and their most natural football player. And that's a tough loss. We'll see what's wrong with him. Third down and seven. Short drop. Enderly floats it out there. And unable to catch up to it is Lee Smith. And it'll be fourth down. Right now, Enderly staying out there. He looks as though they go for this. Now they said punting it on. Looks like they're going to take Cushing's shoe off. Clay Matthews, the third, of course, the son of the great Hall of Famer, Clay Matthews, and nephew, Bruce Matthews, replacing him. And he's a good linebacker in his own right, but if Cushing's hurt badly, that is a tough blow for the Trojans. Still a very positive possession there, I thought, for the Vandals. Yeah, I thought so, too. Confidence. Good. There's a high punt by Connolly. Good punt. It's going to hit it about the five-yard line. Takes the long bounce from the Bengals. Skips into the end zone. The Trojans will have it at the 20 yard line. 40 yard punt. Not a bad punt, really, by Conley. Just took a funny hop for him. Not the one he would have wanted. 7 0 Trojans. We're coming back. It's now time for the stop. Trojans will have it for the second time. They lead it 7 0. See if we can see what happened to Cushing here, Pete. I'll tell you exactly what happened. He was engaged. And this man right here, tight end, Eddie Williams, comes right in behind him on his leg. And that is an illegal play. That should have been a penalty. And that is a tough play if you're Cushing because you don't see that coming. When you're engaged with another man and another guy cuts you, there's nothing you can do. But right now he's standing up. They're not taking his pants off or anything, so that's a good sign. C.J. Gable, the running back. Quick toss this time to Osbury. Osbury, 25. Gets to about the 28-yard line, pick up about seven. Brayon Williams taking a little ride on the shoulders of Osbury. Osbury's a big dude, like you said, Barry. 6'4", 225, a redshirt freshman. You don't see that a lot, especially for a guy that they think is going to be this big of a star at USC out of Lamar, California. And I like that call by Steve Sarkeesian, just flipping the ball out to him on a hitch, get him comfortable, get him a catch, first catch of his career, and let him start to feel the game. Who's the greatest athlete to come out of Lamar? I'll let you think about it during this Lenore play. And Lenore and Edgar Allan Poe. Lamour. <laughs> Short drop this time and a swing. Caught by Joel McKnight. His first appearance as a USC Trojan. And big things are expected of Joel McKnight. You have to say big a little bit louder than that for this guy because everybody is in love with this guy. And that's the first time anybody's ever seen him. He's been out for about a week with a knee injury. And I wasn't overly impressed with that run right there. Looks like he wanted to take it to the perimeter. And that's what he's going to be at first here at USC, a perimeter player. But they love him. They says he sets blocks. They say he's going to get carries in this game. They says he runs great patterns, great in meetings. Joe McKnight, only 180 pounds. They think, they think really the next Reggie Bush here at USC. Out of River Ridge, Louisiana. Third down and short. Trojans three of three on third down opportunities tonight. And they make it 4-4 as four. Stephon Johnson gets to the 35-yard line. And the Trojans will have another first down. Musica on the stop for the Vandals. This first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Live better at Overstock.com because it's all about the... Oh. Haven't missed a beat. No. <laughs> Not with that. First down at the 35-yard line. Give this time again to Johnson. And he busted across midfield into Vandal territory at about the 48-yard line. Shiloh Ko with a shoestring tackle. And he's had, to do that. he's had to do that twice now, Barry. Ko 
trying to save touchdowns. This offensive line of USC, just look at the push that they're getting. Avili barely knows who to block at fullback. And with Stephon Johnson or any of these USC running backs with their level of talent are not going to get touched until they're six or seven yards downfield. It's going to be a long, long night. You're just seeing the mismatch of the USC offensive line versus the Vandals D-line. First down at the 48-yard line. Gable back in the ball game. Booty going to go up. Throws over the middle. Wide open this time. Davis makes the catch inside the 36. The tackle leaps over another man inside the 15. Down to the 13-yard line. 35 yards on that play. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studio. Get a Kia Sarah game break with Mike Goldberg. Hey, Barry, we saw Oklahoma's home opener today, and Bob Stoops, that was a great day. Well, for Brother Mike, not so much. Arizona at BYU, the game in Provo, and the Wildcats lose their opener 20 to 7. Mike Stoops falls to 2 and 2 in season openers. Better day for Bob for sure. Yeah, tough loss uh, for Mike Stoops and the Wildcats. They Big things are expected of Arizona down in Tucson this year. New offensive coordinator didn't show up today. Here's Booty throws underneath this time to Havili. And he will get it down about the 10-yard line. And a flag comes down. And that could be a face mask. Looks like it's in that area. I'm just surprised at the athleticism of Stanley Havili thus far in this game at the fullback position. He's doing great things, and you see the USC tight end, Fred Davis, doing the same kind of stuff on that long play earlier no in this foul possession. foul on the play. Play was legal. Well, they say now the play was legal. Probably just grabbed him around his neck. That'll happen sometimes. But these USC guys, tight ends, fullbacks, jumping over people, looking more athletic than some teams' tailbacks do. Yeah. Booty now five of seven, 71 yards, and making it all look pretty easy here. Well, when USC's getting a push up front the way they are in that zone running, it's going to be very difficult to stop this offense no matter what they call them. They have not shown much. Gable as far as running back. Go. Walker in the slot now in the ballgame for the first time. And it gives to Gable. Gable is cracked as he gets inside the 10 yard line of the game. Pretty good stick that time by Brandon Ogletree with help from Shiloh Kale. And that does not look good. That is Cushing. You see the ice on the ankle. And you really hope well for, for him, an inspirational player. No question, Cushing. I want to welcome those of you just joining us. USC leading 7 0, looking right now at a third down and uh, Oklahoma of course having an easy time with North Texas third down here and five booty straight back throws a swing pass out of the back of the Gable Gable spins right out of the hands of the tackler and takes it into the end zone for a USC touchdown David Bogora had a beat on him and then couldn't find him and that's the best Idaho has to offer defensively as far as tackles go David Bogora First team all whack, seventh nationally in tackles last year. This guy's a tackling machine, but CJ Gable makes him look silly right there. That's that good Silmar shake and bake. CJ Gable is from. What a beautiful move taking into the end zone. And these USC backs don't look like they're missing anybody, even though they got a lot of injuries and a couple transfers. Now they are really a machine here. Beeler drives the extra point through. We'll jump away two, two minutes and 15 seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter, and the Trojans lead it 14 to nothing. We welcome you back to a sold out Los Angeles Coliseum. 92,000 people on hand to watch their team, the number one ranked USC Trojans, who have jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis alongside, and Jim Watson roaming the sidelines. And this really isn't so much about Idaho. They're not playing badly. It's just that they are in against arguably the best team in the nation. Frank said about the 12-yard line. Gets a little gap here. And his crack and flags come in from every corner of the field. Alan Bradford, first man down the field. We get a piece of Frank's, and now we'll see about the penalty. More and more violence on the kickoffs. That's what we're going to see this college football season. Well, you know what? We've seen even in this early portion of the season, holding penalty against 
Idaho will move them back once again is teams are just simply getting better field position. I mean, they're starting at the 35 or 40 yard line. Better and better field position, and that changes everything. If you really look at a game. On play, both on the return team. Holding on number 15 on the return team, that penalty's declined. Holding number 49 on the return team, that penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul, 10 yards, first down. Well, Rob Aiky looked happier last night. Yes, he did. <laughs> but if yeah. team is not playing bad, like you said, Barry, they're not, they're not turning the ball over. They're not making a lot of mistakes. They're just getting out physical man on man by USC, which is what you would expect. Right now, USC 18 play for 160 yards, average of nine. I don't, not bad. 14 for 66, average of 4.7. Well, when we, you know, you always look at matchups, and when we did look at our matchups, I mean, they are Idaho is just out man, literally at every position on the football field. Pick up a five by Deontay Jackson. Let's go to the sideline. Jim Watson, I believe, has an update on Cushing. Jimmy? Yeah, Barry, you guys saw Brian Cushing come out. They took off the shoe. They cut away the tape. They, they worked on his range of motion, and if you can follow me on this, it looks like the injury was at the top of the ankle, right in front. He walked along the bench for a little while trying to put some weight on it. He was trying, as you know, this is a guy who can chew glass. He's a pretty tough kid. He ended up on the training table. They put ice on it, and finally the medical staff said that's it. They threw him on the cart, took him in. It is a sprained left ankle. I asked him, he coming back? He just smiled and said, I hope so, but I think he's doubtful. Well, doubtful for this game, but that is good news. I mean, that's kind of injury could be a lot more serious than a sprain. And the guy that did that to Cushing's ankle, just making a catch, Eddie Williams. And that's the way football goes. You know, you get it like that sometimes, and sometimes you give it like that. The good thing for Cushing is if it's just a sprain and they can handle it and treat it, they do have a bye week going into the Nebraska game. After this game, they could have him back for that. But this is a guy that USC sorely needs on that defense because he is probably their best defender, and that's saying a lot. So first down for the Vandals at the 26-yard line. Bruins showing blitz, and they come with a bl blitz, or rather the Trojans, and they come with a blitz off the edge. And this ball going right into the hands of Maluaga, and he takes it in for the score. Maluaga just was standing right there, and there is a rookie mistake. A rookie mistake by Stanley Franks, who is supposed to be the leader of the Idaho Vandals team. And he's trying to make something happen. Sharice Wright with the pressure, not buying the reverse. Remember, they faked this on the first play of the game. This time, they give it to Franks. Wright is all over him. I believe it was a called pass. But for some reason, Franks trying to throw that ball away. He's not a quarterback. Throws it right into the pelvic region of Ray Mawaluga, and Mawaluga laughing at that one, taking it into the zone. That's the easiest touchdown he'll ever score, and Rob Aikie talking to his star player. Now, the play is under review right now, and I believe they're going to be checking whether or not Stanley Franks was down when he threw that football. And uh, the, right now, the ball is marked at the 13-yard line. I have an idea that Idaho is going to dodge this bullet here. Mawaluga was just standing right there, kind of looking I have. Stanley Franks is a defensive player for the Vandals. He does return kicks, but for the most part, he is their star cornerback. They're using him a little on offense because he's dynamic and fast. Let's see if the knee was down. Yes, it oh, was. Yes, absolutely. The right knee was down. And they're not going to review it. They're calling it down, and you're right, Mary. They dodge a bullet. Big bullet. Maybe Franks is just going to hang out on the sideline while they're playing offense. Well, you saw Rob Aiken kind of put his arm around Franks, pat him on the shoulder, and tell him, don't do that again. <laughs> they go out of the gun this time. Four-man rush, Enderly, and a quick screen, and he just busted up big time by Sharice Wright. Now this is interesting because Sharice Wright was the guy who was talking about her. There was a little buzz about being interested in a transfer because there's so many players on this USC team, so many guys that feel like they deserve reps, and he was not getting them. Then he started playing with the ones, and now early in this football game, making some big plays, helmet to helmet contact, and just putting it on the tailback, Deontay Jackson. Only 180 pounds, he's not supposed to win that war. The loss of nine, and again, whistles blow. Third down and 27. 
Now the Vandals really need to just keep their composure here. Not let the wheels come entirely off. Just five ticks remaining here in the first quarter. Their play calling hasn't been bad, and as the game has progressed, this quarter has moved pretty quickly, and the Vandals have moved the football a little bit. And they've done some good things, especially with better field position. And I like the way they've mixed it up offensively. Unfortunately for them, the long sack with Frank. There's no foul on the play. With the game clock operator, please reset, reset the game clock to 22 seconds. 22. And now they're having some issues just getting plays off, whether it be the Thank you. game clock guy or whatever's going on. This is a little bit of a haphazard drive for Rob Aikens' fan. I'll say, and he's looking at huge yardage right now. Third and 27, as we said, the ball back at about the nine yard line. It's hard enough, you know, when the game clock guy's messing with you. It's hard enough here. He's <laughs> call to see him with. Now they got 14 seconds to get this playoff. They're gonna have to get to the line of scrimmage. Uh, pretty quickly here. They're going to wait until the quarter expires is what they're going to do. And just worry about it in the second quarter. Probably for the best. I think so. So time expires here in the first period and uh, Nathan Edgerly really has uh, not done anything terribly wrong thus far. Seems pretty poised and uh, obviously a real learning experience for him but when he gets the wax season I think he'll benefit from this game. 14 to nothing at the end of the first 15 minutes of play. USC over the Idaho Vandals. We're coming back to a sold out Los Angeles Coliseum after this. We welcome you back to Los Angeles Coliseum. The Osara Football Saturday. The USC Trojans, the nation's number one against the Idaho Vandals. And uh, as expected, I think it's fair to say the Trojans dominated the first quarter, lead it 14 to nothing. Now Idaho looking at a third and 27 back at their own nine yard line. And the give is to Jackson, and Jackson is back short of the 10. Keith Rivers stood him straight up. We talked about Rivers in the open, all watch list guy, three year starter has basically lived up to all his potential, but with the, the fanfare that most of these guys arrive at when it comes to USC, it's almost impossible to live up to all the potential, and he's pretty much done it. Not easy, though, not easy to do. These guys are all expected to come in and be superstars right away, be Matt Liner to Reggie Bush right out of the gate. It's tough. Short kick this time by Conley, coming up to about the 48-yard line is Desmond Reed, and he was stopped almost immediately. For a short kick, but a short return as well. 38 yards on the line of this two yard return by Reed. But the Trojans will have it, and they will have it in Bandles territory when we come back. 14 0. Let's see. Brought to you Well, the Trojans will start from their best field position. They'll start at the 48, 47 yard line of. The Idaho Vandals, their last two drives started their own 20 yard line. They went 10 plays for a score on one and eight plays for a score on the other. In motion comes Hazelton. And Booty's going to throw. Steps up wide open. Hazelton makes the catch for 35. Inside the 30, knocked out of bounds at about the 27 yard line. Gain of 20. The Vandals trying to show a lot of different looks to the Trojans' offense, but. None of these looks are getting any pressure whatsoever so far on John David Booty, and he hasn't dropped back a lot. You let that guy throw out of a rocking chair, he's gonna tear you apart, but still, nothing really complicated coming from the USC offense. Vidal Hazelton, another big time recruit, playing his sophomore year, getting his first start in place of Patrick Turner, who got blown up by Ray Malaluga on Tuesday in practice, and he's not really suited up for this game, Barry. And still, it goes on. Here's Ronald Johnson on the reverse. Johnson, dragged down by Ogletree. Very nice play by Ogletree. Right now, let's send you back to our College Football Saturday studio. We've got a Kiyosara game break with Mike Goldberg. Barry, thank you very much. Kansas State is at number 14, Auburn. Little trickery here gives Ron Prince's team the lead. Jordy Nelson to Leon Patton. But the lead and a long opening season winning streak is in jeopardy. They've won 17 straight, but right now Auburn is inside the 10-yard line with 2 minutes and 15 seconds to go. 
All right, thanks, Goldie. We'll keep an eye on that. Joe McKnight in at the tailback spot now for the Trojans. This is McKnight. McKnight gets it going straight ahead. He'll be close to a first down. In fact, he'll have it at about the 16-yard line. And right now, this is all just pretty easy stuff. The Trojans just getting off the ball quicker, bigger, stronger, moving the Vandals down. Giant push from the Trojans' offensive line, and I would expect to see this all night in Los Angeles. It's going to be a long night for Idaho if they can't get any kind of penetration when it comes to that USC zone. It's not complicated, and all these tailbacks, whether it be Gable, Stephon Johnson, Joe McKnight, or Alan Bradford, who we haven't seen yet, are going to get a lot of confidence running with that kind of push. Stephon Johnson is now the tailback. Three wideouts with Hazelton in the slot to the right side. And this is Johnson. Johnson kicks it outside at the 10. Now cuts it in, gets inside the 5, and finally is dragged out about the 2-yard line. But again, it's all about the offensive line here. Right now it is, because when you get these guys going downfield, there's a reason they're running the football at USC. And you saw that graphic of the giant weight differential between these two and you just look at the shiftiness in the feet of Stephon Johnson he's got that Adam Shamian and Kylo Keo eventually catching up to him but not before he almost takes it to the house 205 yards of offense now for the Trojans and they're knocking on the door once more Johnson will be close but he will not get in Shiloh Kale keeps him out of the end zone. Kale doing a nice job out there. He is. There's a lot of guys on this Idaho Vandals team that are giving what Rob Akey wants them to give, and that is effort. Shiloh Kale, one of those guys. All these guys are running around the field and trying their best to take down these Trojan offensive guys and all these different skill position people USC's throwing at him. It's just a tall order. Yeah, it sure is. Ball inside the one yard line. Second down and goal. Booty going to throw it up for Hazleton. And he makes a spectacular wow. catch for a USC touchdown. What a catch. That was reminiscent of something Mike Williams did against Oregon State here in the Coliseum. Nadal Hazleton, 6'3", 210-pound sophomore, New York, New York. One of the faster guys USC's had at wide receiver for a long time. Get his first start tonight. You're not going to see a lot of that. There's not a lot of coaches that can teach that. Rayon Williams, the corner, in the right position. He's going to watch that on film and just... What are you going to do? Giggle. Yeah. One-handed all the way. He never did bring it back to his, with his other hand. He, that was one-handed, top to bottom. Spectacular catch and another USC touchdown. Beeler with a conversion. And with 12.24 left in the first half, the Trojans' lead is now 21. Well, the Trojans just having it all their own way, and it's really all about the offensive line, but even on a play that probably uh, shouldn't happen, how about this catch? Well, this is kind of the game so far in a nutshell. Just the superior athleticism and experience and setting for USC just to showcase themselves, and you saw Vidal Hazleton doing his thing, and look at those possessions. Not messing around, and they're not throwing the ball a lot. No, it's very selective. What a kick by Peter. And remember, that's from the 30-yard line, and he drives Franks about four yards deep in the end zone. Well, he is a stud kicker. He's got a giant leg, 225 pounds, 6'2". He's not a little tiny kicker. He is replacing his friend Mario Danello. We've talked about it. Only kicked one field goal last year because Danello took care of most of it. It was a 49-yarder versus Cal, which was a big field goal at that point for the Trojans in the Pac-10 season. And just a really athletic guy. You'd expect USC to have a pretty good kicker. Well, why not? Every other part of the team is pretty good. It really why not, is. Why not the kick? It really is redundant, but most of these guys are just the biggest recruits that you can find. Trojans right now going with a backup crew of linebackers. Maiva, Thomas Williams, Clay Matthews. And the give this time is to Deontay Jackson. We're getting across the 25. It's about the 26, pick up of six. And you'll see this a lot in games. It's not just because the Trojans have a lead of 21 points. They will start mixing people in and out and playing different defenders. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I've liked Deontay Jackson in this football game. He is not back down. He's taken some big hits, and the kid has looked pretty good. He's very light, and he's taken some giant hits from this Trojan defense, but 
again, this Vandals team not backing down, they do have to generate some more first downs and get a little bit more confidence going for a young offense and a new offense with a brand new terminology. Picked up seven yards on first down. And he'll try it again. And he is going to be stopped a couple yards short of the first down by Thomas Williams. He said, Mayava, Williams, and Tapp, who's now the linebacker for USC. And remember, you know, we haven't seen any of these guys play a football game because they haven't. Deontay Jackson, redshirt freshman. Nathan Enderley, the quarterback, playing his first game ever, redshirt freshman. And even though they're down, they haven't made monumental mistakes in this football game, and they played with a lot of poise, and that's a credit to Rob Aiken and his coaching staff and what they've done so far in their short time in Idaho. Third down and about four. And Lee rolls out, buys a little time, and it's almost in the second. Knocked down by Kyle Moore. And that was going to be a pretty good sized game. That was going to be a good game, and it was great patience by Enderley. He kind of got more caught in no man's land. But again, that's USC versus Idaho. He's calm, he's doing all the right things, but the superior athleticism of the USC players, you see that, you don't expect a guy 275 pounds to be able to get up like that and bat your ball down. And it's very frustrating for Idaho, but the truth is, these athletes that USC has are unparalleled. Yeah, absolutely. Conley will punt it away again. High, twisting kick. Desmond Reed will handle at about the 32-yard line. Gets a little bit of a gap, slips through to the 45. Across the 45 and the 46 before Taylor Rust makes the stop. 41-yard punt, 13-yard return by Reed. Trojans have it again. They lead it 21 to nothing. And a beautiful night here in Los Angeles. Beautiful night so far for the USC Trojans. They will have it on the offense once again. They have scored on their three previous possessions. That was Joe McKnight trying the right side. Big stacked up. Well, today's broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the United States Armed Forces, serving in 177 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching us tonight all around the world, in Iraq, in Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. And we welcome all of you. Watching what has really been a symphony so far, Pete. For USC, it certainly has. They're averaging 8.6 yards per play before that last, but 207 yards in 19 minutes. First down at the 45-yard line. Swing pass out of the backfield to McKnight. McKnight at the 45, midfield, spins around, gets down to about the 46-yard line. A pickup of eight. Chris Smith makes the tackle, and that's exactly what they want from Joe McKnight right now. Try to get him out in space, let him do his business. They want to see him out in the perimeter, just like you said, and they want to see him creating plays and setting up blocks and just getting comfortable playing college football again. There are so many backs that USC has. Chauncey Washington, the starter, not playing in this football game. Broderick Green, who was a stunning, big, true freshman out of Arkansas, Little Rock, also maybe out for the season. Chauncey's going to be back, but we're just seeing a couple of these guys that they have. Started the season with nine, and they are now down to about six. That's Desmond Reed. Desmond Reed's going to be close to the first down. He might be about a half yard short. tight ends now as we get a look at Anthony McCoy. It is fourth five and one. And a quick toss this time and a first down. The catch made by Stanley Havili. And that is exactly how USC has used the fullback when they've had an effective fullback. Now Avili got hurt last year, missed the season, so the fullback's role was lessened a little bit last year. Now it's kind of back to where it was. Well, part of the issue at USC is that Avili just wide open out there. Chris Smith not getting out and handling that. Ball looked like it came out, but went out of bounds. The problem with USC is they put a lot of tailbacks at fullback over the years. They haven't had guys whose first priority was blocking, and that is definitely Avili's first priority, but I tell you what, he's pretty talented with the ball, too. 
play fake this time. Rudy going to put it up. Throws intercept. Stepping in front this time was Shiloh Kale. And Kale has been all over the field for Idaho. Rudy doing a great job tonight. And that is not characteristic of John David Booty whatsoever. And a big, giant play just for the confidence of the Idaho Vandal. Shiloh Keogh just stepping right in front. Not a good throw by John David Booty. Here is a guy who went through all of camp only throwing three interceptions, and that came all in one practice. So this, just a hung ball by Vidal Hazelton. Hazelton could have fought a little bit more for that ball, but he's an inexperienced receiver, and still you got to blame Booty for hanging it up there. K.O. stepping in front and laughing with that interception. So K.O. makes the big defensive play for the Vandals, and now have it at the 25-yard line. There's a blitz off the edge, and they gave us to Jackson, and Jackson gets by the first play, but he's dragged down after a gain of about three. Keith Rivers on the tackle for the Trojan. And that was the best thing that could have happened for Idaho at that moment. What they need now is to move the football, get a couple first downs, and maybe it's a tall order, but they need a field goal. They need some kind of score, something to give them confidence, feeling good going into the half. Second down and seven. Out of the gun this time, Blitz comes and a quick toss to Jackson. Jackson at the 30, gets close to the 35 yard line, but it'll be about a yard short. It'll be third down and one. Right now, let's send it to our college football Saturday studio, back to USA game break with Mike Goldberg. Well, Barry, we told you a couple of minutes ago that Kansas State had been owners of a 17-game win streak in season openers. The streak is in serious jeopardy because Brandon Cox and Gabe McKenzie gave Auburn the lead. Then Kansas State's Josh Freeman coughs up the football. Antonio Coleman finds the end zone. Seconds remain. Brandon Cox and the Tigers lead by 10. All right, Goldie, thanks very much. Third down and short now. Out of the gun again, and a quick toss and an incomplete pass, throwing him into triple coverage that time. Clay Matthews, closest man to the intended receiver, who was Raleigh Lumbala. And Lumbala just a little bit behind him. He couldn't get that big body down to make that catch. A little bit of an inaccurate throw by Enderley, but love the fact that aki has got a lot of confidence in his quarterback right now. Just a redshirt freshman again. This is the setting for his first college football game. And the kid has looked good, looked very poised on that football. Unfortunately for the Vandals, they're going to have to punt it back to USC. Conley drives this one. And Reed, a fair catch at the 17-yard line. Very good punt by Conley, 49 yards, no return. 21 to nothing, USC lead. When we return, we'll get you back to our College Football Saturday studio. We'll get an update with Mike Goldberg. Give it a lowdown on a lot of very good college football games. And, of course, that huge surprise at the Big House in Ann Arbor. Felt like today was a holiday, Barry. That was great. Man. All that great college football going. Not a lot of cars on the road. It felt like a holiday. I think of it, I think it is. Well, yeah, you got Labor Day. But that was like a Thanksgiving type of 4th of July. Arbor Day. Something really big, you know? I always sell it. Do you really? Oh, God. I got Arbor Day. I get flag day going real flag good. Flag day is good. Flag yeah. day is good. Just hang them up all over the place. Run around, celebrate. You don't have to flag the dog. No, certainly not. I got Ethiopia. Ethiopia is good. Right, Golden Creek? Does it get this time to Johnson? Johnson is going to turn around and drop that for getting about a yard. All of a sudden, Idaho kind of digging in defensively. It'll be third down and four for the Trojans. Ben Alexander. Makes the stop. And you can say that, Barry. You can say that they are stepping up right now and making some plays. Every once in a while, they step up and say no to that USC zone, and USC does not get a big gain. That being said, USC being very vanilla in this game offensively. Very selective when they throw the ball. John David Booty with the bad interception. But mostly, it's been zone and more zone from USC. Now an empty back. Field. And they put Avili split far to the far side. And the throw back over the middle and it's caught and dropped by Walker. So the Trojans will have to punt. First time. Yep. There is a first time for everything. USC not 
a team that punts a lot. Last year they punted a little more than they normally do because they did not have the big play threats of a Reggie Bush or Lindale White. But Greg Voidnick out there to get it done. Here is the punt. Shiloh Kao going to be the deep man. He might have a little room. And he runs out of room in a big hurry. Gets it to about the 33 yard line. That's where the Vandals will start. Trailing 21 to nothing. 545 remaining to be played here. 51 yard punt. An eight yard return by Kao. Right now, let's take a look at our Aflac trivia question. Ex Idaho lineman. Jerry Kramer, you remember Jerry Kramer, of course, won five NFL titles with Green Bay. Which ex-USC quarterback made the NFL Hall of Fame as a Packer safety? SC quarterback made as a Packer safety. Jim Hardy? But I do know who the greatest athlete ever in the world was. I want to finish That's that. right. Who is it? It was Tommy Smith, the great sprinter, of course, great Olympian. Look out for Osbury. That's all I'm saying. Play fake this time, and a bootleg, and a throw underneath this time to Williams, and Williams is going to get a first down. Just short of midfield. Well, that's a good play. I'll tell you what, Barry. Last night when the offensive coordinator for the Vandals, Steve Axman, told us there was going to be a lot of naked boots, a lot of movement by the quarterback, we said, wow, I mean, this guy's really going to get hit, Enderly. But this movement game that Idaho has pulled out in this, in this first half has been pretty effective. They've been doing a good job just kind of dinking and dunking around the field, but they are going to have to go downfield if they ever want to score. They're going to get a timeout called, and they just get it called. Enderly right now, 7 of 13, 60 yards. I mean, they're not numbers that knock your lights out, but indicative of how he's played. He's been very steady. He's not playing nervous. And this is a, a pretty tough theater to play in. It's the toughest theater probably in the country, and you add to that the fact that it's 90 degrees in the middle of the night in Los Angeles and one of the hotter days maybe in the history of the Coliseum. Not an easy call. Let's take a look at our Aflac trivia question. We just asked you the question, and we're going to give you the answer. Aflac! And I'll find out as well. See if you're right. Next out of whole lineman Jerry Kramer won five NFL titles with the Green Bay Packers, but it was a USC quarterback who also made the NFL Hall of Fame. Aflac! As a Packer safety, the answer is Willie Wood. That. A few years after old Jim Hardy who was a two way player. That's interesting. First down at the 48 yard line. Jason Bird in the ball game for the first time at the running back spot. This is Bird, and Bird will be stopped short of midfield by Keith Rivers. And Trojan's going to try to. Make a claim for a fumble, but he was definitely down. And Bird is their changeup back. Six feet, 221 junior out of Shelly, Idaho. Brian Flowers, again, not on the trip. He is suspended. He's the other faster guy that they have. Deontay Jackson, the starter, but Jason Bird, a banger. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name, brand name products. Not live better with Overstock.com because it's all about the... Oh. Thank you. I got the out there. That was good. You bailed me out. <laughs> Play fake again. Enderly going to throw deep. He's got a man out here, Komar, but Komar cannot catch up with him. I think Komar might have been out of bounds before he came back in. And you saw right there, not a great deal of speed on the perimeter for the Idaho Vandals. Their fastest player, Deontay Jackson, and there's probably a big drop off after that. Not a bad ball by Enderly. Komar just no wheels to run up under it. Plus, he was getting beat up a little bit by Terrell Thomas, a big physical corner for USC. So now third down. And eight, the ball right at midfield. Two of seven on third downs, and we're going to get whistles and flags, and I think Idaho going to back up five yards here. Chris Anderson and Mike Ayupati might have gotten out of their stance a little Prior early. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 65 on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. They're going to call that one on Anderson, and that was kind of odd because it seemed like the entire Idaho offensive line got into their pass sets. Yet the ball hadn't been snapped yet on the shotgun. Now, normally, when it comes to the shotgun, you don't have a count, especially in a place as loud as the Coliseum, and everybody's kind of watching that football like a defender. 
Guess nobody was watching that. So now it's third down and 13. It's like Ishtar. <laughs> nobody watched that either. Right? And he throws, and the catch is made. Nice grab and an even better pass. Lee Smith on the receiving end, but a bullet thrown in there by Enderley. How is this guy looking right now? I mean, Nathan Enderley is looking good, and we might see a star in the making dropping it right between Sharice Wright and Mozique McCurtis. Enderley, a little late on the blitz, was Ray Mawaluga. And he finds his man. And again, Lee Smith, their most steady receiver, junior out of Everett, Washington, times it up well. And the two superstar USC secondary guys run into each other. So the Vandals have it at the 35-yard line of the Trojans. Anderley throws again. Catch is made by Smith again. First down at the 21. Pitch and catch. Now Steve Axman's got it working a little bit. This is what we thought we would see for most of the game from Enderley. I'm not talking about the success. I'm talking about three yard, three step drops, and then quick releases. Now they're mixing that in with the movement game they've got going, and a couple of successful runs by Deontay Jackson, and Idaho is cooking. Mozik McCurt is eventually making the stop, and now before another first down. Right at the 21 yard line. Enderley goes from under center this time. And again is to Bird. And Bird will get inside the 20 about the 19 yard line. Send you Dallas on the back. And no matter how much of a banger Jason Bird is, Barry, Cedric Ellis, 6'2, 305, senior. The new Mike Patterson, a lot of people call him here at USC. Duck footed, but great feet. A guy who's paid his dues. He is not going to win that battle against Cedric Ellis. He is. Truly one of the best linemen in the country. And a guy that has redshirted USC, wasn't immediately a star, really had to wait his turn. Yeah, and did himself a big favor by coming back to school and not preparing for the draft last year. Anderley throws this one, it's batted at the line of scrimmage. Might have been Thomas Williams, I'm not sure who got a hand on it. And you don't expect that from a 6'5 quarterback, a big tall guy. That's part of the advantage of having a quick drop and a tall guy. He can see over the line of scrimmage and get that ball out. But again, the athleticism of that defensive line and linebackers that USC has, it's tough to get anything by this defense. But I know it's not looking bad right now. No, they're not. Out of the gun once again. Five receivers. Empty backfield. Anderley throws, and the man was knocked down. I don't know if we'll get a flag. Maybe this trip. I thought maybe that... Uh, Rivers might have interfered with Max Komar, but apparently Komar just tripped in the eyes of the officials. Snap a little high, Malaluga right in the face of Enderley, but he shows poise and gets the ball out. Unfortunately, like you said, his receiver went down, and normally you'd say that's a mismatch wide receiver against Keith Rivers. Keith Rivers probably faster than most safeties in the country, and defended that play well, no flag. Tito Amancio to try a 37 yard field goal, high snap. It's good. So Clay Matthews gets in, blocks the field goal attempt, and what looked like a very nice drive, all of a sudden, just becomes a whooper. And you're going to see Clay Matthews right here up the middle, laying out perfectly and blocking that kick. That is picture perfect how you do it. Amancio seemed like his timing was right, hits it pretty good, wasn't a low kick. But wow, Clay Matthews, who's been playing a lot in this game because of the injury to Cushing, coming up with a big play on special teams for USC. You can't help when I think about that block kick. You think about Appy State, what happened to oh, Michigan yeah. earlier today, and that beautiful block kick by the volunteer, by the uh, Mountaineer. So 3:27 left in the half, and I'm sure uh, Pete Carroll would like to finish this half with a flourish. Short drop this time. Booty throws. Catch is made by Osbury. And a pickup of about four. And that may be just dangling the bait for something to come later. Well, Osbury was a guy that Pete Carroll and Steve Sarkeesian, his offensive coordinator, really expected to star in this football game. But so far, it's been a guy who was kind of a last minute starter in Vidal Hazleton with that circus catch in the end zone. Patrick Turner again, the starter, not suited up for this football game. We give this time to Gable, and Gable is tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage by David Fobara. 
Right now, let's take you down to the sideline once more. Jim Watson. Waddy, what do you got? Yeah, big night, you guys, for Christopher O'Dowd. Starting at center, he is the first true freshman to start for USC at center ever. He was pretty impressive in the spring, but remember what the coaches were saying. He was more impressive during that recruiting process. He was asking them questions about what their plans were for him, specific degrees at USC, and they said that maturity was part of the reason that he's getting the starting nod tonight. Petros, I know you're loving this kid. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Empty backfield here, and five receivers in the ballgame. Ball knocked down at the line of scrimmage, and I believe it was Musica who got a hand on it. And that's a big play for Idaho. They forced another punt, and they're going to get the ball back here. That is one of the only knocks on John David Moody. When you get him up under center, they were going to put more shotgun in, but because they're starting a freshman, they haven't played a lot of shotgun. I don't think we've seen shotgun yet from USC, and that was one of the big things they worked on in camp. John David Moody more comfortable in that shotgun. That's what he ran in high school. Last three possessions, an interception and two punts. Line drive kick. Kale runs up, makes the catch at the 40-yard line. Tries to break between two USC defenders and really pays the price. 37-yard punt, 7-yard return by K.O. and a big hit at the end of it by Keith Rivers. Well, next week, College Football Saturday returns. We'll have a triple header. First, it'll be Fresno State looking to upset 25th-ranked Texas A&M. Then 22nd-ranked TCU takes on 4th-ranked Texas in a showdown with BCS implications for both teams. And finally, Colorado gets it on with Arizona State. It all begins with the College Football Saturday kickoff show presented by Kiyosara at 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on FSN. Well, Barry, just when I was going to praise the conditioning of both these teams on a really hot night, you always see a lot of cramps in the first game of the season, partially because it's the first game and guys are getting into game shape, and partially because... It's hot usually early in the season. It is hot tonight in the Coliseum. It's hotter than that. That yeah. that thing has been stuck on 80 since I was a child. I think since the first Olympic Games <laughs> here was 1932. That's Brian Williams down there getting stretched out, the cornerback. Well, I want to remind you, coming up on the Hitachi Halftime Show, Goldie and DeMarco Farby in the studio. Tell you all about Tennessee and California. Had a shootout up in Berkeley. Still going on, as a matter of fact. All the scores from all the Pac-10 teams and all the highlights from all around the nation, and there are a whole lot of them. It's coming up on the Hitachi Halftime Report. Well, we haven't seen a lot of ice towels. We haven't seen a lot of cramps. I think that's the first cramp we've seen in this football game. And Idaho's gotten through the first half so far. Minute 56 left, pretty healthy. Well, they have forced... USC to give it up on the last three possessions after USC scored in the first three. Here comes a blitz. Enderly to throw. Stands in there. Throws. Catch made by Comar. Pick up of eight. Kevin Ellison on the stop. That's a very gutsy throw. <laughs> Without question, especially into the teeth of this defense. But this just goes to show the hyperbole that people use. Best USC defense ever. Well, that's on paper. Right now, USC just gave up another first down to Enderley and a bunch of guys that really don't have any business moving the ball on them. You can't say enough about the poise of this Idaho quarterback and what they're doing offensively. They're really beating the off. It is a first down. Enderley throws, tipped, and almost picked. Limbala probably should have made that catch, but it went off his fingertips and fell harmlessly to the turf. Absolutely should have made that catch, but this is a kid who played running back last year. 95 yards actually last year running the football for Idaho, but new coach, new positions. Maybe he was just waiting for the hit a little bit there, but that one right off both hands. Nice throw. Second down and 10. We'll go out of the gun this time. Blitz comes again. Picked up again. Amberley throws. Catch made by Comar. Omar will get across the 40 yard line and be about three yards short of the first down. Clay Matthews runs him out. And you know, Barry, I don't know how much USC pulled off the throttle or whether or not they should have when they went up 21 points in this football game. But no matter what their reaction has been, especially just the mentality of the players, you can't say enough about what Idaho is doing to Pete Carroll's team right now. They're playing with poise, they're executing out there, and USC 10 plays 30 yards. After 25 plays, 206 yards, 
Vandal's doing the job. So is Aki. Two and moving it a little bit on the offensive end as well. Third down and a long three. They show blitz. They come with a blitz. The throw is incomplete on a slant intended for Komar. Now Aki kind of has a decision to make here. Oh, he's got a punt. I think he's going to go. You don't want to anger the USC offense yeah. and Steve Sarkeesian, the guy who's calling plays for USC. It's a gutsy call. They are going to go for it. Everybody's still on the field. Don't want to wake the sleeping giant. No. Not if you're Idaho. You want to go in there down 21. Well, I, mean, I think this is typical of, of Rob Aiken, who we have come to know and really enjoy spending time with. Terrific guy. Play fake. Emily rolls. Throws underneath. Catch made, but... I'm not sure if he's going to get enough for the first down. It's, USC seems to think it will not be enough. They have not spotted the ball yet. It was a perfect play. It should have been a first down, but just a little bit far. Enderly on the play fake has Eddie Williams and just throws it out of his reach a little bit. Williams has to dive. You got to throw it right on that guy's chest so he can turn up field and get that first down. Williams kind of was diving backwards. I don't think he got it. I don't either. They're going to measure this, but I'm quite sure it's going to be short. And it, if it is short, you got a minute 22, and USC's offense coming back on the field. It's close. They got it. <laughs> Wrong like again. That. Wrong again. <laughs> they must have painted those lines crooked. And it's quiet here in the Coliseum, but they're excited on that Idaho sideline. These are positive things happening for Rob Aikie's team. And again, you look at a team that's had four head coaches in five years, and what they're doing right now on the field with the number one team in the country is phenomenal. It's really something to behold what Aikie has done to the attitude of these players. There's not a doubt in my mind he will turn that program. Seems like he already has. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he certainly has changed the attitude here. Because he's going to be outmanned in most every game, even against WAC opponents. The WAC is a tough conference. You bet it is. You know, you, what you just said is the truth. It's like one of those posters that's up in an office building, you know, those posters that are supposed to motivate people that work in cubicles and say, attitude is everything. The spot of the ball on the play. And the USC, yeah, that's interesting. They are questioning the spot of the ball. And you know what? This I, is something they can look at. Yes, it is, and it's not, not a bad idea. Well, it's going to be difficult because you have Eddie Williams coming toward the Idaho sideline, diving and making that play. He was not diving forward. So it almost seemed like he was diving at an angle backward. I think it's pretty close to the right spot. I think it's going to be very hard to reverse this. Well, when it's that close, I mean, are they going to move it back one inch? Here's another look. See what you think. It's, it's very hard to tell. I mean, it looked as we see it to be pretty close to an accurate spot. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Well, during this booth review, uh, World Financial Group asks, have you reviewed your finances lately? World Financial Group helping you move from dreaming to doing. Didn't take long to look at that one. Quick. So the drive continues for the Idaho Bandits. 36 yard line of the Trojans. 21 to nothing, 122 remaining. First half. Great back. And only throws, catch made by Williams. Williams to the 10 to the 5 and out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Enderly has shown me more and more on every play. That was into the teeth of a blitz. Well, Rob Akey, when we saw him at Washington State as a defensive coordinator and a defensive coach for many years, always with a lot of excitement, nearly ran out and tackled his quarterback with exuberance after that throw and just dropping it in there. That's Terrell Thomas guarding Eddie Williams. That's an all Pac-10 caliber performer, a big physical corner. Taylor Mays having to come over and eventually clean up that play, but I don't know if USC's playing lackadaisically, but right now the Vandals moving that football looking impressive. Good for them. 13 to 24, 144 yards in the first half for the redshirt freshman Nathan Enderly. And he's going to throw it up here for grabs. He's got a six foot six inch wide out there in Greenwood, but even 
Six foot six wasn't big enough to catch that. Well, this was his first game ever, and sometimes when it's your first game ever, you're glad that ball sails out of bounds. Obviously, the kid wants to make the play, but Aaron Green went 6'6", six, six, but only 196 pounds. A true freshman out of Edmonds, Washington, seeing his first action. So many of these Vandals seeing their first action here in the Coliseum. Described by Coach Steve Axman as a big old giraffe. <laughs> Is that a compliment? I'm not sure. Sure, I love giraffe. <laughs> And the lead goes from under center, rifles it, and that ball should have been caught. We're going to get a flag. That's going to go against the Trojans. Carrie Harris was on the back of the receiver. But again, a well thrown ball by Nathan Andrew. Yeah, he is not afraid, and the Trojans aren't getting a lot of pressure on him. You see the cross routes there. That ball intended for Lee Smith. There's no pass interference on the play. The ball was the tipped. The ball was tipped. And I did not see the ball being tipped when it first went up. I thought it went off the hands of the receiver, but Keith Rivers batted it aside. And once that ball is tipped, all bets are off, and you can do whatever you want. Except grab the face mask for Adam's apple. Can't do that. You stay away from the Adam's apple. Three of ten on third down situations for the Vandals, and now we're going to get a timeout. Rob Akey wants a timeout. Their second timeout of the half. They will still have one remaining. Clock is not really a factor with a minute and six seconds remaining. And if Idaho is able to punch this in the end zone and get six or seven points out of this, it'll be a giant victory going into the oh, locker room. No question about it. Let's take a look at our Holiday, Ex Holiday Inn Express. School bio, and we're going to look at the University of Idaho. And you and I have been there, of course, up in Moscow, Idaho. Moscow, Idaho, right there on the border, right between Washington State and Lewiston, Idaho, is Moscow, Idaho, a wonderful place to visit. They play in the Kibbe Dome, and it's a fun town to be at, and usually that's where we stay. Well, we go call games at Washington State, and obviously Coach Rob Akey knows that area well because he's been coaching at Washington State forever. He knows how to recruit for that area, but he did move, Barry. He, he did, did move when he got the job yeah. at Idaho. He said, I can't live in Pullman and coach at Idaho, so he moved to Moscow. Moscow, incidentally, considered one of the top 100 small towns in America. Third down, goal to go. Anderley hit as he throws. Ball is caught. At about the three yard line. Now it's going to be fourth down. And again, Rob Aiken will have a decision. Clay Matthews coming on a big rush. He got a little piece of that, just as he threw. And I think they're going to go for three here. Yeah, Tino Amancio coming out to make this kick. And this is a positive for the Vandals. They weren't able to punch it in and get the touchdown. But if they can get a field goal here, still a good thing. A lot of people didn't think they'd score any points. It's a 20 yard. Last one was blocked. Good snap this time, and Anansio drives it through. It is good, and Idaho is on the board. And again, I don't know if there are any moral victories, but if there was, maybe this is one. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis alongside. We didn't expect to be saying this, P. It's still a ball game. And you and I were putting ourselves in the role of Rob Akey and knowing him as we do in the locker room. I'm sure he was saying, we can win this game. He's saying, it's not so bad, is it, guys? This place, these people, the guys we're playing against, not so bad. That being said, USC has been very selective in their play calling. They've run primarily zone. When they've thrown the ball, it's been pretty basic. John David Booty with the one bad interception. All that being said, you really have got to respect Rob Akey and the poise of this Idaho team going down 21 and then 
basically stopping USC with their undermanned defense and moving the ball with their undermanned offense. Nathan Enderley has played a fantastic ball game so far as a redshirt freshman. It didn't look like it was gonna be that way. USC scored the first three touches it had. Yeah, they sure did. They came out and were running the football with a lot of authority. They got a bunch of first downs and they were running zone. Their offensive line was getting a great push. You'd think USC is gonna come out and do more of that because it's been very successful for them. But Idaho has dropped back, moved, and done a lot of good things with Nathan Enderley. And he has shown the poise necessary to really get it going and be a successful young quarterback in this whack for his new coach, Rob Akey. They've been looking great. And there's a look at Rob Akey and uh, Jimmy Watson, of course, had an opportunity to visit with Rob Akey as he came back onto the field. Waddy, what do you have to say? You know, we know Rob Akey. We love this guy. He said the big part of the first half was that defensive stop. He said the guys finally quit thinking and they started playing. No more hesitation. He loved the job Enderley's doing. He said he's handling the pressure and giving himself some confidence. And he said, you know, I told the guys at halftime, this is a big park and all these people came out here. Let's give them a show. Let's go out and have some fun. At, that is so Rob Hickey. That's exactly what I would have expected he would have said. I think. Well, he told us there's two reasons that you play football. You play to win and you play to have fun. Right now, the Vandals, I'm not sure if they can win this football game because they're going to have a hard time punching it in the end zone, even if USC just stopped playing offense. But they seem to be having fun in the Coliseum right now. No question about it. I, I like we talked to Rob Hickey. I'll tell you this after this. Kick return, Joseph on the return. Joseph finds his seat and gets it back about the 30 yard line. We talked to Hickey about his opponent next week, which is Cal Poly, and we were kidding him about, you know, how are you going to be able to get you guys ready to play Cal Poly after this emotional game? He said, yeah, especially playing a team like Cal Poly after we beat USC, that's tough. <laughs> and for USC's side of this with Pete Carroll, it's not about Idaho. He's not thinking about Idaho. It's about the performance of his team. And to be honest with you, right now, his team has not really performed that well. They've gotten a great push with the offensive line. They've done great in their zone game. Other parts of their game have really lacked. I don't doubt that Pete got into his team at halftime. And I think this is a very, very important drive. See if they can kind of shake off some of the cobwebs. Play fake and a roll out. The throw underneath and grab from behind is Avili by Brandon Ogletree. Ogletree having a nice game defensively. Ogletree's another one of those guys, just like Shiloh Keogh, who is going sideline to sideline and doing some good things. He is a linebacker. He was a starter last year. It's his second year, and he's looking pretty good. 34 yards, 12 plays for USC. Not very good. So it'll be second down and 10. No game on that first snap. Hazleton this time comes in the slot to the left side. Two tight ends in the game. Davis and Thompson. They like to run Davis down the field. Good drop this time. A quick screen to Osbury. And Osbury breaking tackle is going to be close to the first down. It's going to be a little short. It'll be third and short for the Trojans. And Steve Sarkeesian has done a good job of getting Osbury going. Running a nice hitch route. Got a big cushion from the cornerback, Eric Hunter. And for a big dude, showing some pretty swiftly hips. Well, they said his fall camp was just so good that really he forced them to make a decision to move Patrick Turner to the flanker spot. And Patrick Turner not suited up for this game, so Osbury was supposed to be the featured receiver. We've seen some real flashy plays from Vidal Hazelton. Booty on quarterback sneak is going to have the first down. <laughs> That's just taking advantage of that offensive line charge as we talked about that line. Baker, Byers, O'Dowd, Rashal, and Brown. <laughs> offensive line of USC outweighs the defensive front four of the Idaho Vandals by 55 pounds a man. And still the Idaho Vandals are hanging in there. USC did not score a touchdown in the latter part of the second half. They did not move the ball very well, and the Vandals forced a turnover. Knight now in at the tailback spot for the coach. Slot right, it's not first down. It's Knight in motion. Booty, short drop, could cost him at night. Knight at 40, at 35, cuts it inside. Now, reverses field, tries to get the outside, gets around a tackle at the 45 to midfield, at the 45, to the 40 yard line of Idaho, and out of bounds to 38. Well, that's what you can expect over the next few years from Joe McKnight. 
Joe McKnight, a very smooth player. Doesn't look like he's going that fast, but believe me, he is going that fast. And this is the kind of thing that will get you yelled at in the film room if you're a freshman tailback. The ball's kind of hanging out there, and he's running backwards and running backwards again, but getting a first down and creating something, this guy has a very exciting future in college football. But still, taking a lot of liberties on that. I'll say, ran right about 60 yards. The game 20. Incidentally, that is considered a run because it was a lateral. First down at the 38 yard line. Rudy going to go up off the play fake. Deep drop, throws. New comeback pattern. The catch made by Brad Walker. And Walker will pick up another first down at the 25 yard line. Brad Walker with two receptions so far in this game. The first two of his career, he was a walk-on that just earned a scholarship to get out of Tustin High, California. He's finally a senior. John David Moody with plenty of time delivers that ball. Brad Walker plays perfectly right in front of the marker. He does it on Stanley Franks. Ogletree comes down and makes the tackle. Brad Walker before, remember Barry, was famous in 2005 for the guy that Reggie Bush tried to pitch it to in that Rose Bowl game versus That's right. Texas. That's right. Poor guy. <laughs> Wasn't expecting it. Good story, though. Walk on at USC. Comes a success. It's time to throw, and it is incomplete. Tenet for McKnight out of the back. Mm -hmm. Booty threw it the only place he could. Good coverage that time by David Vavora. And that is a good story, having a walk on at USC, a place that brings in so many big time recruits and so many guys with so much fanfare when they come here. A lot of these guys are anointed, almost like Joe McKnight is anointed before they even step on the football field. And to be able to persevere like Brad Walker has and actually make an impact in games as a player, pretty big accomplishment. Second down and 10 at the 25-yard line, just underway here in the second half. I know it comes with a blitz and a quick toss to Osbury, one-on-one -on -one that time. Out of bounds by Stanley Franks. Tough matchup for Franks, who gives away about five inches. Right now, let's go down to the sideline. We've got an injury update from Jim Watson. Waddy, what do you got? Barry, way back in the second quarter, middle linebacker, the Mike linebacker for Idaho, Jordis Ratty went out of the game. They x-rayed him at halftime. A possible broken bone in his foot. They didn't put a boot on or anything. They just taped it up. So Adam Shamian is on in his place. And Petros, did you just mention Tustin? You give a shout out to my hometown? <laughs> Tustin, California. They got an Ikea down there. <laughs> just came, right? <laughs> Third down now, and about two. And they gave us to Gable, and Gable busts it, gets to the 10, to the 5, to the 4-yard line. And right now, C.J. Gable is showing in this football game a little bit of stuff that he did not show last year. Look how live his body is here, Barry, as he's taking it downfield. He's starting to shed tacklers a little better than he did. He always saw very well the helicopter in the air. Fires coming right up over his body. The USC guard, who's a very good run blocker, and a nice run by the young guy. Pick up a 13. You see his numbers on the day. Seven carries, 67 yards. Now Stephon Johnson, the tailback. And this is Johnson running behind Havili, and he's wrapped up. As he gets started, he's going to run by no game. Be second out of goal, just inside the four-yard line. Idaho continues to give up yards grudgingly. And so far in this game from these young USC tailbacks, not a lot of experience out there on the field, but they've held on to the ball well and they've found holes and done the right things with the football. I'd like to go to the fullback in this situation. Havili is the fullback. Second out. Booty gonna put it up. Throws. To Havili, touchdown. Mm -hmm. Havili, very much a part of this offense, and I think we're going to see a lot of that this year. You felt that USC was going to do this, come down and march down the field. Stanley Havili's just going to show up in the flat. That's a Bronco play that pretty much everybody runs. Idaho should have been a little more ready for that. But they weren't. Shiloh Keo not close enough to Habili. He makes the catch and basically waltzes in there. Healer's traffic point is up and good. And so the Troy Trojans capitalize on their first possession of the second half and the first career touchdown 
for Havili. 28 to 3, Trojans lead. We're coming back. College Football Saturday on FSN is brought to you by Hitachi. Inspire the next. By Samsung Blast. And by Kyocera, the new value frontier. Well, the Trojans take the second half kickoff and take it all the way down the field for a score. Did so in a timely and efficient fashion. John David Booty, 5 of 6, 34 yards and a touchdown on that drive. On the day, 16 of 22, 143 yards, three touchdowns reception. Idaho will get it for the first time here. Beeler drives this kick and Frank's going to come out about five yards deep. The 10, the 50 gets to the 20 yard line and that's where we'll get in the first place. Well you talk about Beeler's leg. Strong. Yeah. Giant quads. That's what it is. You're going to get those quads working. And you're looking at Enderly right now, the guy that combs his hair forward when he doesn't have his helmet on, almost in a Brody Royal, former Auburn quarterback type of way. Alabama. Same state. Yeah. Now start, he's with starts the with an A. Yeah. Comb the hair forward is a good look for a lot of people. I like that. Yeah. Fourth sports star playing in his first game ever has done well. Part line forward I and, and backward. People kept whispering in their nose. <laughs> Dante Jackson picks up about a yard. Enderly earned that spot in spring and in camp. And Deontay playing his first game too, but this guy only had 13 touchdown passes his senior year in high school. I mean, so he wasn't really tearing the world apart. As a senior in high school, Mick Holt, USC defensive coordinator right now, is actually the guy that went out to Nebraska and recruited him, brought him into Idaho early, left his senior year early. But, man, is he performing today under a lot of pressure. And do they play fake? And just lost the handle. And are they going to call out a fumble? I don't know. Now it's in the hands of the officials. SC ball, just that simple. We just went to throw it and just lost the grip on it. Well, Max Komar ran a beautiful route. The corner hit bit, and Komar was wide open. Enderly, all he had to do was drop that in there. Not too much pressure on him, not more than he's seen. And that is a fumble. The arm yes. was not going forward. He was bringing it back. That ball is out. Kyle Moore with the pressure, but not a great deal of pressure. Heads up play by Moore to jump on that football. But that should have been a first down Idaho. That's a tough break for the Vandals and the first giant mistake we have seen from this Vandals offense in this football game. Enderly, as we sing his praises, big folk. And USC now looking at a nine yard field. And Allen Bradford will be in a tailback for the first time. So now the fifth USC tailback that we have seen. Idaho is going to take a timeout. It's a 32nd timeout. And we'll jump away as well. 10 27 left in the third quarter. 28 to 3 Trojans. 28 to 3 USC over Idaho. 737 remaining to be played here in the third quarter. And USC will start at the 36 yard line. Pete Carroll looking on. As you mentioned, P, a very vanilla look to this team tonight. And uh, I don't think Pete has any reason to hang his head, nor to be disappointed with what he's seen. His team leads by 25. Right and you know, your players will recognize him that bad in the play call. There's no question about it. Being able to stop every gain of a yard. Getting through that time was Chris Smith. And you look at all these different tailbacks, Barry, that USC's had and that they have this year. C.J. Gable, Bradford Reed, and Johnson McKnight. They're going tonight. We've seen them all. Herschel Dennis seems like he's in his seventh year, but he's a guy that will help out a lot when he's healthy enough to play. Johnson will be back against Nebraska. Mark Tyler's probably going to redshirt, and Broderick Green may be out for the season. But they got a lot of dudes, and Emmanuel Moody, the very publicized transfer to Florida. Booty, short drop, pump fake. Now he's going to go for it all. Feels for Hazelton, overthrew. Nice job defensively again. Stanley Franks. Well, the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. With the convenience of shopping at home, you can save up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the 
Oh. Thank you. You know, Booty was 8 for 10, 90 yards, two touchdowns when USC was up 21 to nothing. 8 for 15, just 52 yards, and an interception since then. He hasn't had a lot of luck, and he really has cooled off in this game. And as the crowd has become flat, the USC team has become flat, and Idaho's hanging in there. Third down long. And to give this time to Bradford, and he's not going to get anything, and a late flag comes in. <laughs> Flag thrown from deep in the second. There's some confusion on the sideline with the USC coaching staff. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. 15 yards into the run, first down. Well, very unfortunate for the Idaho Vandals, a face mask, and that will give USC a first down. They had him stopped. That's a big defensive stand. Let's take a look at this. Not sure if that's a personal foul unless it gets grabbed again. There was a face mask grab worthy of a penalty by Ben Alexander, but the personal foul, not so sure. You really got to twist the guy's head to be a personal foul. But it is a first down for USC at the 19 yard line. And that will not please Rob Aker, I'm sure. Booty straight back, deep drop this time. They get a little pressure on him. Booty steps up, throws end zone for Osbury, and it is incomplete. Right now, John David Booty not looking super sharp. He was great in the pocket. He felt a little pressure, pushed up, had Osbury, that giant target, basically just missed him in that situation. So it'll be second down at the 19 yard line. Bradford remains the tailback. Adam Goodman is the fullback. And now Hazleton in motion. They give it to Bradford. Bradford is stopped almost immediately. Shamian with help from Lavarius. Aaron Lavarius doing a good job there coming down the line of scrimmage and making that play. Yet another guy, Richard Freshman. Playing in his first game here in the Coliseum. He's got that to look forward to in the films tomorrow. Coming down and making a good play on a physical back in Allen Bradford. I mean, the Vandals are battling. There's no, no question about it. They they're using their speed, gap control. They're changing fronts. They're doing the right thing. Desmond Reed now, the running back for USC. Vandals showing blitz, jumping around defensively. They come with the blitz, and Booty throws a slant. It's caught by Walker, and Walker is going to be very close to the first down. It will depend on the spot. Eric Hunter and Chris Smith defending. And it's going to be very close. And right now, looking at USC, even though they're having some positive plays and some successes and also some failures, they're not playing with a great sense of urgency. Guys are walking around, and it's not indicative of this USC team. Brad Walker has been playing with some sense of urgency, makes a good play there, and he's racking up catches that he hasn't gotten in his whole career, and Booty's finding it. Third catch of the night for Walker. Stephon Johnson now, the running back. On fourth down. And less than a yard. And the give is to Johnson. He's got the first down. And Moore stays on his feet. Gets inside the five yard. And finally knocked that about to about the two. Shiloh Kia was the man that met Johnson in the hole. But that strong lower body is Stephon Johnson. Big dad. You see written there under his eyes. That's his grandfather who passed away. Showing him some love. Keo bouncing right off those knees and thighs. And Stephon Johnson taking it for the first down on fourth down. He's been, I think, the most impressive of the USC backs, the most consistent this evening. And that was the case in camp as well. Runs hard, doesn't he? Yeah. Running much, much more disciplined, working a lot harder. As Petros mentioned, gets to about the one yard line, just short. <laughs> If you go to a USC practice and the way they move so quickly and what they do, 
This is not how they look in this football game. You're right. There is not a great sense of urgency in this football game. Pete Carroll looks more intense right now than his guys playing on the football field. And they've got to get that back. They've got to capture that. I know they're playing an opponent that they should be beating up on, but still, no sense of urgency out there. Yard to go for the touchdown, and Johnson with a second effort might have gotten in. He did. Touchdown, Trojan. Took more than a little bit of effort, but the Trojans finally punch in that fifth touchdown. Pretty simple here. Stephon Johnson went by, bending it back just a little bit. Couldn't really make a decision on whether or not he wanted to leave his feet. If you want to leave your feet on the goal line, you'd better make that decision. And Beeler drives the extra point through. It is a 35 to three ball game. With four minutes, five seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. 35 to three ball game, 405 remaining here in the third quarter. Methodical effort thus far for the Trojans. And this one hits it about the four yard line and will skip in and out of the end zone. KO will not have a chance. And Nathan Enderley will come on once again. And Enderley in this game has shown a great deal of poise his first game ever. He's thrown well on the move. He's found different receivers. He's thrown from a stationary position. He's been very accurate. Unable to punch it in the end zone, and that, the big mistake that he has made. A little too excited seeing an open receiver drops the ball, and Kyle Moore jumps on it. But so far, if I'm Rob Akey, Steve Axman, this guy's coaches, I'm feeling pretty good about my redshirt freshman quarterback, and I hope he can get out of this game healthy and lead the Vandals through the season. Not unprecedented for Idaho to have a very good quarterback. John Freeze, remember, not too many years ago. Here's a game for Jackson. Got a little gap, but then it did close down, as it always does. Kevin Ellison putting a hit that time on Deontay Jackson. Well, USC safeties, Ellison, their starters, and Taylor Mays, about 230 and 240 each, could both be linebackers in the Pac-10, and let alone the WAC. Big-time guys that step up and really help out in the run game. Ellison, really one of the most solid players in this conference. Pick up a five, it'll be second down, and a long five. And are they gonna go up? Throws deep this time, and a little confusion on the rod, I think, from Max Komar. Komar turned it in. The split was there as well. And it depends on what you consider a game getting away from a team. But right now, Idaho, their best friend, if they want to stay somewhere in this football game, is first downs. That's what they need to do. And here on a third and long, they need a first down. Because USC gets that ball back, they're going to start running and running some more and really pushing that Idaho defense around. Go out of the gun once more. Third down. We'll call it six. A little less than six. Four man rush. Emily throws. Flag down. And unable to make that catch was Lee Smith. It's going to be a hold on the Vandals. It's only holding if you get caught. And they got caught. They did. Would expect this would be refused. Feeling the ball on. With pressure on the quarterback. Well, in the second half so far for the Vandals, it uh, has not been a thing of beauty. No first downs. Personal foul, illegal helmet contact, number 65 in the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Only minus two in terms of yardage. They have not scored the second half, so USC has uh, done what it needs to do both sides of the ball. They've shut down the Vandals offensively, and they have scored. They expect to see another very heavy dose of the UFC tailbacks and that zone blocking. Asking a lot of the Idaho defense. He's a short kick. Reed's going to come up, taking a 35-yard line. And slips out of two tackles and has finally dropped at the 44. Flag is down. So the Trojans may have to move backward here. Three minutes and two seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. 
entirely owned on both sides of the football by the USC Trojans. Chris Smith is the injured Idaho Vandal. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 97 on the return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. So they will tend to Chris Smith. Rob Akey going to go out there. Let's go down to the sideline once more. Jim Watson, Waddy. Barry, this is really turning into a game of attrition for USC. Remember, uh, Spanos, the center, was out before we even started tonight. Now Sam Baker, the two-time All-American at left tackle, he's been out the entire second half. Remember, guys, he came into this game with some cracked ribs, and at halftime he said, you know, it's just starting to bother me, so they just playing it uh, precautionary here. He's just going to sit out the rest of the second half. But you guys have been talking about it. This entire sideline is flat. If you just walked into the building, you might even think that USC was down 35 to 3. There is no life, no urgency, and no purpose on this bench right now. Well, you know, it's interesting, uh, P and Wadi, that we were talking to Pete Carroll about how do you get your team motivated? Can you get a team motivated to play 12 or 13 games? And, and you know, conventional wisdom has always said you just can't do it. You can really only get them really prime four or five maybe six times now i know some coaches dick tomey is one san jose state coach who believes as pete carroll does you should be able to get a team prepared to play every week well pete carroll really takes it upon himself he does have leaders on this football team and he does have guys that he looks to to control the other guys and to get them going but he really takes it upon himself to inject his own enthusiasm into these players and get them to practice and play with a sense of urgency now they're in great control of this football game with that sense of urgency, not so much. Play fake this time. Booty rolls out. Buys himself a lot of time. Will come back for Osborne. Makes the catch just short of midfield at the 49 yard line. Pick up a 17. And a first down. Right now, the Trojans look like they can do just about what they want. They look like a lazy bear that every once in a while, you know, they'll swipe and get the honey that they want. And that's just John David Moody. You see the beauty of what he is as a quarterback, a guy that can throw on the move accurately like that. I mean, just hit, you know, the head of a tack right there with Osbury. And if Osbury was in the NFL, that would have been a completion too. Got both feet in. Largely a backup offensive line too. And you heard Jim Watson tell you that Sam Baker has not played the whole second half. Right now, we'll fill this in for you in just a moment. Moody steps up, throws, and after the catch is Davis to tight end. And another pickup of about 14 yards to about the 38-yard line. Offensive line right now, Malou is on the offensive line. There's the throw down, still there. Zach Heber is there, Radovich, and Brown. And Zach Heber playing his first game ever out of San Pedro High School in San Pedro, California. Guy loves breakfast. You know why? San Pedro, breakfast capital of the world. Ooh, I did not know that. A lot of longshoremen, you know, and they're hungry for breakfast. Pancakes, waffles, eggs, bacon, you know breakfast. Yeah, I do, yeah. Most important meal of the day. Radford remains the tailback. Adam Goodman at fullback. Moody going to go up once more. Throws over the middle, and the catch is made. Not an easy catch either by Vidal Hazelton. He's come up big today. He has, and he was a guy that some people were saying maybe wasn't worth all the hype. There was a big recruiting battle between Penn State and USC and Hazelton. Came out to USC. Runs a nice route here, very fast. That's Franks, one of the best corners in the country, interceptions wise. Gardner, Franks is all over him, but Vidal Hazelton showing a lot of toughness for a finesse guy and making that gap. And the Vandals may be getting a little bit gassed right now. Last three plays for USC 17, 14, and 12. And USC is throwing the football, and they're doing it, and they're throwing it to their key guys right now. Time they out. want to punch the ball. California. Number USC one, has called the timeout. Time That'll out. be their first timeout. The Vandals also, we talked about the fact that USC is going largely with a backup offensive line right now. The Vandals, too, uh, looking at a lot of different faces, especially on the down line. Let's take a moment to recognize our U.S. Bank honors candidates. And, of course, one of them in this ballgame, John David Booty. USC players have won three Heisman trophies in the last five years. And hope they hope, of course, that John David Booty will make it four. Deshaun Jackson up at Cal, he had a big day today and a win against Tennessee. Yeah, if he keeps taking punts back every week, Deshaun Jackson is going to turn every head in this country because not only is he productive, he is beautiful to watch and very exciting to watch. The key for John David Booty and the Heisman, when you talk about the Heisman, and we tend to talk about it very early in the media. Too much, I think. Is victories. John David Booty needs victories. 
as long as USC piles up victories, and a lot of people expect that, John David Booty is going to be in the mix, and rightfully so. He's 20 of 30 tonight for 194 yards and three touchdowns. He's completed his last three passes. The ball just short of the 25-yard line. And Hazleton in motion. Booty going to go up again. Steps up, throws, and it is incomplete. A little bit low that time for the intended receiver, Stanley Havili. Well, under Pete Carroll, there have been uh, more than one Heisman Trophy winner. Carson Palmer was the first. Carson Palmer, a guy that a lot of people thought was not going to live up to that potential and did once Carroll and Norm Chow showed up. Matt Leinert, the guy everybody wanted to be in the city of Los Angeles for a long time, putting together the seasons he did. Unbelievable, the talent around him. And Reggie Bush, what could you say? I mean, people were scared to get a hot dog in this stadium when he was out there because they were scared they were going to miss something like that, something very exciting. Gave us some great moments here on FSN. They tried to drop him that time. The man was right there to stop Bradford. Andrew Blevins making the stop. Remember, Joe Artis Ratty went out early in the ballgame, so they're right now three deep at the middle backer spot. And watch Blevins coming on the blitz. Nobody picks him up. That is a young offensive line in there, like you mentioned, a very physical tackle on a physical player. Alan Bradford, and that's good for Blevins. All the positive plays that these Idaho Vandals guys are having. Blevins, another redshirt freshman, are great things for the future of this football program this year and years beyond under Rob Here they really stack three wide receivers to the far side, to the near side, rather. Booty steps up, throws, catches the ball again by Hazleton. Will not be enough for first down. It's going to be fourth down. And about three now. And, uh, it looks as though this time Pete Carroll's going to bring in the field goal team, and Vila will have an opportunity. This will be about a 36-yard effort. Well, we talk about the Heisman Trophy winners that uh, Pete Carroll has coached here at USC. He started his career at USC, Pete Carroll did, losing five of his first seven games. That's the truth. They beat San Jose State and then went on a losing streak. Dealer drives this one through and makes it a 38-3 ball game. But since that 2-5 start, Pete Carroll and the Trojans 63-7. Changing the culture of a program is not easy to do. And Pete Carroll was able to come in and had a big victory against UCLA in his first year, 17-0 is what he hung on the Bruins, and they were supposed to be a good defensive team, but Carroll's defense just shut them down, and they started really winning with defense, and then the offense came after that. Well, what happens when sports and science collide? Introducing the incredible new series that analyzes sports like you've never seen before. Don't miss the groundbreaking season premiere of Sports Science. It takes place September 30th at 9, only on FSN. I got to tell you, P, I saw a preview of that show. Very good show, and especially for a learned man like yourself. You'll, yeah, I wasn't really great in the it. science classes, though. Uh, you know, all the other kids were in, you know, biology and all those different things, and I was in, you know, physical science, MCR, you know, minimum college requirement. <laughs> I'm telling you, very interesting show. Watch it. You'll like it. Actually, in class once, my legs fell asleep, and I got up really fast and fell into a giant display of igneous and sedimentary rocks which rained down on me like the apocalypse. It was horrible. <laughs> Never forget it. No locusts. I'll watch the show, but I am reluctant to sign it. Again, Beeler drives this kick five yards deep in the end zone. I mean, remember, they're kicking from the 30-yard line. New rules don't matter to him. No. I mean, I, I really believe that is going to be a factor in many games this year. Well, it helps out field position and play calling, half the play calling. It's a very technical thing. It's really about field position. And you think it's hot up here, Barry. Oh, I'm telling you. It is very humid, too, which I think in, in part might have accounted for that fumble that Enderly had a little while ago. Enderly back at the quarterback position now as the band will start at the 20-yard line. Trojans going with backup defensive line now as well. Kind of getting off the gas a little bit here. Give us to Deontay Jackson. And Jackson spins out of one tackle. But he's finally wrapped up after a gain of about three. Still a lot of starters in there for USC, though, even though they've moved in 
a lot of the second stringers defensive line wise. Ray Maualuga very involved in that play. And he just looks scary. I mean, linebackers like that, they don't make them like that very often. A guy that is just so reckless and so frightening and so bone jarring. He knocked Patrick Turner out of this game and that guy's on his own team. That's right. And even the coach has said it was just a vicious hit. And with that, we come to the end of the third quarter. A look at the scoreboard shows the Trojans 38 and the Idaho Vandals three. Trojans 148 yards of offense to just one for the Vandals in the third quarter. Thirty-eight to three with eleven seventeen remaining, and uh, the Idaho bench uh, just kind of resigned to it all. I think right at the moment, but still playing hard. Michael McDonald is the new quarterback for the Trojans. Booty's day is done. Yeah, first down. Is to McKnight, and he doesn't get anything. You know, we've been talking about Heisman Trophy, we've been talking about John David Booty and Deshaun Jackson, all that kind of thing. Another guy that's really contender. We also talked about teams in the WAC. Hawaii, one of the really good teams in the WAC with a Heisman Trophy candidate of their own, Colt Brennan. Now he's off to a fairly good start. I'm just gonna, they're playing Northern Colorado. What is he got? The, they're, they're early in the second quarter. 274 yards and five touchdowns. Wow. <laughs> he's a great kid too. I've had the opportunity to talk to him on the radio a couple of times here locally in Los Angeles. And he is just a wonderful kid. Yes, see, caught the football up, but I think the Vandals may have this. They do. No sign from the officials, but they do. Idaho ball. And that's Joe McKnight, the true freshman out there playing in his first game. Shiloh Keough swooping up and making that play. Joe McKnight, a little bit loose with the ball. I told you earlier in the game, he's very loose with that football and kind of running it around, a smooth player, very nonchalant. Michael McDonald in the game. I thought he was going to play halftime. And that ball comes out. He turns his back to the defense. Keogh coming up with it. And a host of tacklers. Frank's involved there. Doing a great job lodging that ball out. How about Shiloh Kidd? I mean, you talk about you know, unsung guys. I know we've been talking about trying to find an unsung hero, hero in every game. This guy is more than unsung. I mean, he's been everywhere. Had a big interception. He's made a few big tackles, and there with the big fumble recovery. Brian Noy is now the quarterback for Idaho. Noy going to put it up on first down, and he does. It's complete, and then really cracked and stopped, and dropping the football. And I think it's going to be called an incomplete pass. Raleigh Mbala was the intended receiver. Had it in his hands. He just took a shot, and dropped the ball. Eddie Williams is going to limp off the field. Now, second time he has done so, that could just be a cramp as well. Ryan Noy in a quarterback, and I believe Rob Akey very happy to get Enderly in and out of this game healthy and looking on to the rest of the season. Noy has seen limited action in 12 games, a career backup pretty much. One touchdown, four interceptions. Second down and 10. in motion and might have taken a little too much time. Well, that's what happens when you bring a new guy and these guys are used to Enderley's voice. Bringing a guy with a new voice and a new cadence and uses some different colors and different numbers and everybody gets confused. That's just football. I think so, it wouldn't be that way with college students, but it is. And it looks as though Enderley's going to come back into the game. I don't know. He might have had an equipment problem or something. All I'm going to say, just wait. Aki just said, wait just a minute. Maybe he's going to keep him out. But this is a great chance for Idaho to punch the ball in. It is a pretty inopportune moment, now that you think about it, to take Enderley out of the No, it is. Game. I'm sure something happened. I'm sure it was either an equipment problem, or maybe got a little dinged. Or... Here comes the blitz. Noy can't go anywhere. He is just surrounded and wrapped up back at the 32-yard line. <laughs> Averill Spicer was there. Spicer's a guy that... Pete Carroll has been abusive about talking about a guy who's really stepped up and added some depth to the D line. That time just runs right through Adam Juratovac, who just kind of moves inside to block nobody. And Spicer ends up with the sack and he gets to clown around for the people left here in the Coliseum. Second sack for the USC Trojans, and now it's third down a whole bunch. 
And they give him a handoff to Bird. And Bird will get a little bit back, but not nearly enough for the first down. And <laughs> it'll be at about the 27 yard line. About a 43 yard field goal try from here. Runner like Jason Bird reminds me of somebody. You get out there in the open space and see one guy and you just try to headbutt it. Yeah. <laughs> Some guys are just like that. It's the only way they can run the football. But Bird's been pretty productive in his career. 1,400 yards in his career, 16 career touchdowns at Idaho. 44 yard field goal try now for Tino Amancio. Amancio has it on its way, and he's got enough leg, but it is no good. hit a line drive he had enough distance but direction was a little off and uh, it remains a 38 to 3 ball game nine minutes two seconds remaining to be played it's all usc <laughs> 38 to 3 with 902 remaining trojans will take over the football at the 27 yard line. Michael McDonald, the quarterback, the senior from Newport Beach, his dad, I'm sure, uh, looking on uh, proudly. Paul McDonald, of course, on the Trojan championship team back in the late 70s as the quarterback, and this is his son. That's Bradford. Get it back to about the 34 yard line, a pickup of about five. Jojo Dixon on the tackle. And Michael McDonald, if he throws a pass here in the fourth quarter, could really mess up his career because he's two for two, 100% with two touchdowns. What's that? What's that? They got to his quarterback rating. That's pretty good. I think it? it's pretty good. <laughs> Second down now, about four. I'm put it up. That was in trouble, and he's wrapped up all of it back inside the 20-yard line by Taylor Rust. Let's go to the sideline. Go oh, on, Michael McDonald, with our own Jim Watson. Waddy. Well, Barry, you guys were talking about Paul McDonald, of course, played here in 1979. Now he's a, a Trojan radio broadcaster. In 79, USC played LSU, only time ever, and USC won that game when McDonald tossed a late touchdown to Kevin the Bug Williams. And so the rivalry could come full circle if SC and LSU meet in the BCS, as they're expected. And McDonald, as Petros just said, would not have to replace Booty for quarter, for uh, history to repeat itself because he threw that touchdown as the holder last year on a field goal. We were there. Right. Waddy was right. there. We were all there. We, we there. called it. Does it get to Bradford? A lot of room, but Bradford will only get back to the original pound markers. Sua Musica on the tackle. And the Trojans will give it up. 7.20. Remaining in the football game. Fourth down and ten. One of the giant differences in this game from the other USC games that we've seen and called, Barry, is the tempo. There's just not a great sense of urgency from the Trojans. Can't say it enough. Good punt by Wooden. It's going to drive Kale all the way back to about the 17-yard line, and there's a flag down at about the 35, 56-yard punt. By the former walk on. Now we'll see about the flag. The flag is right at about the 33 yard line. Relatively long conference going on. Flag like that seems like usually would be a hold from the gunner position and the guys guarding the gunners. It's a legal man downfield. Yes, it is. Very good officiating crew tonight. Jack Folliard, as you mentioned earlier, the referee to Illegal Morris. participation on the defense, Jim too many men on the field. That's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Jim Rennie, the head linesman, retiring this year after 26 years of service as a Pac 10 conference official. Still looks pretty good, Barry. Why is he retiring? Look at him move. Maybe that wasn't him. That was Jack Fuller. Ah. He was the referee. They all move good. But they're all very handsome men, as you would say. 
They are. I'm Greek. You know, we build all the statues and stuff like that. I know that. The Poseidon. <laughs> We're going to take another look at this here. Under review. Six minutes and 52 seconds left in this game. The outcome has long since been decided. But a lot to be learned here from Rob Akey. I don't think there's any question that Rob Akey is, uh, feels a great deal of confidence in his young quarterback now who performed admirably. And a few questions were answered for USC as well. They found some good play from their tailbacks. They have a ways to go with Joe McKnight before he really is a featured guy. You saw the fumble, but he did some good things as well. And they, they really did a good job as far as just running the football and getting their zone offense working. I think that was really the key for USC in this football game to get these young guys going. C.J. Gables, Stephon Johnson, Allen Bradford, and also get Osbury and Vidal Hazleton involved in the offense. And they were able to do that, if nothing else. That was Bradford on the last carry. Picked up about a yard. Georgia Dixon, Dixon was there on the tackle for uh, the Vandals. Desmond Reed now the tailback for USC. Joey Adewale is the fullback. Toss this time to Trevon Patterson, who we didn't expect to see today. Now it's complete to Trevon Patterson. And that will be a loss of about three. Breon Williams to the tackle. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com because it's all about the VO. It's what it's all about. Now, if you look at this USC team, and especially their skill positions, there's so many guys that deserve to be featured. But you just can't feature them all, like Ronald Johnson, number eight, at the bottom of your screen here. We haven't seen too much from him, and they're expecting big downfield things from him. Yeah, he's a big play guy, and there's an interception. That's going to ruin the quarterback rating of Michael McDonald. Picked off by Shiloh Kao. Kao still on his feet, back to the 40-yard line of USC. Kao's had a very big game. He's had a big game, and he has emerged as a great leader. His coaches told us last night that if there was one leader on this team, if this team started to give up big plays and the game really got away from Idaho, that Kao would be the guy to bring this team together and make a big play and get these guys going. You see that just a weak throw for McDonald wasn't ever going to get to Patterson and Kale getting pretty expressive with that ball moving it around and changing it offensive lineman chasing him he's had a phenomenal night and he'll be flying back to Moscow with a smile on his face regardless of the loss no question about it remember Rob Akey telling us that uh, Kao and Ratty who went out with an injury in the first quarter spent Thursday night in the film room sleeping <laughs> not very comfortable Here's uh, Noy with no place to go, and he will be dropped right at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Brian Noy, as you said, the senior out of Pennington, Oregon, has been a uh, backup for the past couple of years. Knee brace flew off there. You gotta figure that out. You know what you do in that situation? You take it off and throw it to the sideline. There you go. Brian did the right thing in that situation. Something like that breaks on you, you just you just got to get rid of it, especially if it's extra paraphernalia. Now, if he hurts his knee on this play, yeah, bad scene. Out of the gun this time. And a handoff to Deontay Jackson, and Jackson gets it going in the right direction, but he'll be about a yard short of the first down, just short of the 30-yard line. Malcolm Smith, and we talked about him earlier, too, on special teams. This is a guy that uh, the USC coaching staff really feels is going to be a vital part of this team before it's all said and done. That is another guy that Pete Carroll likes a lot. He's the brother of Steve Smith, who just finished his four-year run as one of the school's top all-time wide receivers. Malcolm plays the Will linebacker spot and is built bigger and stronger than his brother, and as he's hoping he's tough as his brother Steve, who plays for the Giants and is having a great career so yeah, far. Yeah, apparently going to be the number three receiver there. Give this time to Jackson on third down. He's going to be short of the first down. And I don't think Rob Akey can leave this game with a giant frown on his face. I think he's got a lot of positives to draw from taking a team out here that's had four head coaches in five years. I cannot stress that enough, how difficult that is on a program. That is a program killer. And he is really trying to you know, turn the tide. 
in Idaho, and I think he's on his way to doing that. I, I completely agree with you. He's the right guy in the right place. And fourth down, again, is to Bird. Bird's going to get the first down and more. The 25 to the 20. Runs right through a tackle to the 10 to the 5. Stopped at the one-yard line. Nifty piece of running by Jason Bird. Well, we made a little bit of fun of Bird earlier because we said right when he gets to the open field, he looks for a guy to run over. Well, this time he looked for a guy to run over, and he ran right over. Makes a nifty move to the outside. Chase, Chase McWhorter <laughs> stepping up and being embarrassed in one of his only shots and playing at USC. The forearm to the chin. And he leaves him. Very nice run by Jason Bird, who's been very productive in his career at Idaho. Game of 29. It's first down and goal at the one-yard line. And here's Bird again, and he punches it in for an Idaho touchdown. What a confidence builder. And again, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think Rob Akey uh, really should be proud of his team. I mean, they hung in there. They didn't make too many really serious mistakes. A lot of people didn't think that Idaho would even be able to muster one touchdown or field goal in this football game, and they've done pretty well putting points on the board against what is supposed to be the greatest team in the country. Very simple dive play. Bird takes it to the house. Point after is up and good, and it's a 38 to 10 ball game. So the Vandals take advantage of a nice 29 yard run by Bird. We're coming back. Idaho kicking it off, Vicente Rico doing the kicking, and he kicks it out of bounds. So that will spot the ball at the 35-yard line. And let's take a moment right now, take a look at our Kyocera call of the game. And it took place in the second half. Yeah, it's a nice call because it got this young freshman that everybody wants to see out in space, Joe McKnight and he didn't disappoint for excitement. Not the longest play of the game, maybe not the best run, but certainly exciting. That kid has got some uh, pretty good hips. There. Yes, he does, and you'll be seeing a lot more of him as this season goes on over the next couple of seasons, at the very least. And that's one thing Pete Carroll really got done in this game. He got a lot of these young guys involved. Waddy earlier was talking about Christopher O'Dowd, the true freshman center really involved in his recruitment process, a kid that stays awake in meetings, and good thing he did, because he started his first college game here at the Coliseum for the Trojans. Bradford, the flag comes in. You know, we were talking earlier about uh, Heisman Trophy candidates. We mentioned Cole Brennan, what a performance he was having tonight. Well, now there's a minute and a half to go in the first half. Do you, okay. do you want to know the numbers? Don't make me guess like it's Yahtzee or something. Come on, help me out here. <laughs> He's 34-40, 416 yards, six touchdowns. I tell you what, <laughs> you, you know what's so special about him in real life is when that run and shoot gets inside the 20-yard line, normally the field flattens out to exactly. a point where you can't punch it in the end zone. And Timmy Chang, a great quarterback in Hawaii in his own right, really struggled inside the red zone. Cole Brennan is so athletic can throw some from so many different arm slots and be so creative with the ball that he creates more time and does great things. And those receivers do a great job of helping him out. And June Jones does a great job of coaching. It would really be great if he got invited to New York for that high school. Well, you know, needless to say, with those kind of numbers, I think you could expect that his numbers are going to be pretty good all year long because they have a prolific offense. Not just him, they have a very talented receiver there. Offensive line is good. And a guy that was never offered a scholarship in the history of his football career. That's Cole right. Brennan never offered a scholarship. Walked on, went to prep school, walked on in Colorado, had some problems. JC, and then walked on at Hawaii. And look at him now. The guy's one of the most prolific players to watch and very, very fun and enjoyable to see play. And he's in the perfect offense. I mean, I love watching that offense anyway. I think June Jones does an unbelievable job there. You know, they, again, they play in the same conference as these Idaho Vandals, and uh, there's some good teams in there. The whack is getting stronger, especially with Boise State as the figurehead. And I just like to think of June Jones taking Colt up to Diamond Head, you know, alone and laying down a towel and just <laughs> talking offense for a couple hours. Here's a give to Bradford. Bradford straight ahead. Not much doing there as the clock ticks down to the 1.30 mark. 
take a look at our Keystone Light. Always smooth moment and nothing smoother than this. What a great catch in the end zone. Yeah, this is one of the more athletic plays that we've seen in a long time. Vidal Hazelton starting his first game ever. Never used the other arm at all. Just as a pad when he fell down on it. Nice throw by John David Moody. And that was smooth. Wish I could do something like that. <laughs> No, not like, not like that. Third down now. Bradford again, straight ahead. And Bradford's going to get the first down. It's a read, not Bradford. He's going to get it to about the 48-yard line. Now we're at 40 seconds remaining, so maybe one more play. This one will be in the books. This one sort of seemed like a game that USC really took off the throttle early, especially in their play calling. And Rob Akey's team kept fighting, kept fighting, did come out here and embarrass themselves. A lot of people thought that they would, and the USC team kind of seemed to respond to the play calling and, you know, just kind of resigned themselves to run and zone. But I know Pete Carroll would rather they had a little bit smoother of a performance. And once more, it's Reed who picks up about 12 yards to the 40-yard line, but that should do it. Eight seconds, seven seconds. That will be the last play of the ball game, and the USC Trojans will walk away with a victory here in their first game, and perhaps nothing that uh, Pete Carroll would want to put into a time capsule, but I think he'll take it. A little bit sloppy, a little bit flat. I think there's great future for the Idaho football program under Rob Agee. Pete Carroll's team looking pretty good. 38 to 10, the final score. Join us next week. College Football Saturday will return with a triple header. We start with Fresno State against number 25, Texas A&M. And then number 22, TCU versus number four, Texas. Finally, you and I will be down in Tempe, Arizona. It'll be Colorado and ASU. It all begins with the College Football Saturday kickoff show presented by Kiyosara. That begins at 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on FSN. For those of you watching on FSN West, we'll have Trojans live post-game coverage after a short break. For Petros Papadakis and Jim Watson, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long from Los Angeles. Once more, the final score, the USC Trojans 38 and the Idaho Vandals 10. Thanks for watching College Football Saturday right here on FSN.